go, everybody. It's time for the finals this season. Season 2 of 2024 of KZM. It is going to be a fantastic series here. I'm with my boy Shun. We're starting off on Apocalypse. We've got Snow versus Hero. Let's get it started. Oh, boy. It's been a long time coming. Here we are. Ready for this show? I'm, look, I'm looking forward to this, saying I was born ready for this. I'm looking forward. To attune yourselves now, gentlemen, to the rich tapestry that's going to be woven by these master weavers. It's been a great season. Really a fantastic. Couldn't have asked for a better season here. Things got really close towards the end. Terran almost making a comeback, but here we are with the ZVP finals. How did this happen? Yeah, kind of a little bit of a course correction here. Right at the end, it was looking like uh, Terran were looking a lot stronger than Zerg, and, you know, Zerg weren't really showing up, so to speak. But, yeah, right at the last minute, Zerg kind of flipping the table on Terran and uh, sneaking that final spot. And uh, I'm all about it, you know, as a Zerg player and a fan of some of these players. I'm looking forward to seeing a great ZVP finals here soon. Yeah, it just shows you that anything can happen. and. We already know that Zerg is really powerful right now. They've been uh, crushing in the other tournaments, so uh, we knew that they could show up big. It just seemed like they weren't putting everything in. They weren't, weren't putting their best lineups out. They weren't putting their all into the KCM, but here is a fantastic lineup. Absolutely insane. Um, they've brought their A, A game here, and of course, Protoss brought uh, their uh, S tier squad here as well. well. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to this. And uh, sometimes I would be a little bit more questionable about Queen going out there, but yeah, he, he, might, he might show uh, a very strong performance here. I'm looking forward to see how he performs. I'm really excited to see Hero going out in game number one. I'm a big fan of Hero. Uh, already trying to make sure there's no cannon rush shenanigans going to be going down here and it's going to be a gateway first this is just a little bit of a fake here to potentially force off a drone pool or some he's like completely faking a cannon rush here yeah he is just totally faking and looks like he's going to force hero to pull a few drones so it's going to be worth it here he's already spent 200 minerals and he's he is going to cancel these no matter what um the drone comes over he will immediately cancel pull the probe back and the drones will have to head back to mining but um not the biggest deal here it's just funny to see this gambit paying off for snow and uh, he's already taking a little bit of a lead now though i'm not sure exactly how the math pans out on this i'm sure it's like you know 100 200 uh, or 175 minerals uh in in the bank here for for snow is that the kind of lead we're looking at right now uh, I'm not sure of the exact uh, financial arrangement of these two players after remain vigilant, but yeah, I think that's a, that's a bit of an edge. Uh, getting the, the Zerg to pull off a few drones that early on, it's a lot of lost mining time. I mean, he, he's definitely missing out on roughly, yeah, like I would say somewhere in the region of like 150 to 200 minerals there, potentially as a deficit. Uh, also going to be forcing out a lot of lings at this junction of the game because it's gateway first as well. So even less drones being hatched right now, despite this hatchery going down in the bottom right pocket. So yeah, not the most econ ec economic of uh, openings here for Hero relative to what Snow's done. So this is a small Snow edge, I would say. That's an interesting hatchery placement down there at the bottom right. Uh, I wonder what Hero's thinking placing the hatch down there because it seems like the, the hatch just outside the, the natural would be a much more defendable, easy uh, location here for the Zerg and much better for transferring workers as well. But um, taking that base, I mean, we'll see if Snow can punish or uh, if not, I guess Hero gets a pretty easy fourth base, right? Uh, yeah, potentially. I mean, one thing that Hero's going to be worried about is uh, making sure he's got this Zell account managed. Yeah, he's uh, dealing a little damage to the shields here. Uh, not losing any lings, so just trading a little bit of health, which regenerates, of course, for the shield regeneration. Uh, and making sure that he knows how many lings are here, or how many zealots are here, and now with the Overlord, he sees everything here at the front. He sees that Snow is being fairly greedy with the cannon timing. He's not thrown that down just yet, but staying in the wall back at home, and if you don't see a cannon here, uh, you know that the zealots aren't just going to walk out and head across the map, because a counterattack is totally possible. 
This is a very quick plus one timing from Snow, so it seems like he wants to hit uh, maybe even a pre-speed timing around 6 minutes 30, 6 minutes 40 here. He's going to go straight into Corsairs to confirm exactly what Hero is doing and put a little bit of Zer Zer Zealot pressure like you would usually, but this plus one timing is around like closer to 4 minutes rather than 5 minutes, so relative to the usual timings it's much earlier. We don't see any additional gateways getting thrown down yet. Usually when you uh, go with such an early plus one, you want to get a second gateway so that you can you know, hit that critical mass of zealots, like five to seven zealots uh, to push out with uh, as early as possible. But uh, he's gone for the Citadel and the Starport here. So he's not doing like a huge commitment into pure zealot. He does have the follow-up. He does have the information gathering tool here in the Corsair. Uh, to come across the map and check out what's going on here for Hero. Here playing a very standard game right now, uh, adding on additional hatches. Has his Spire about to finish up here. We'll have Scourge out in time, I believe. Uh, and Snow just going to have to come over, take a look, see what he can get and, and get the heck out of here again. Yeah, I mean, he's going to identify this uh, Spire timing, which he's already suspicious of. He's fairly certain that he was going to be dealing with a Spire, so he will be continuing this Corsair production as well. And like you say, because he's just having one gateway worth of investment in Zealots here, it's allowed him to be quite broad with his tech investment. So he's going to have very fast tech online as well, so probably quite an early... Uh, Templar timing as well, to, if he needed Archon to deal with Mutas, for example. So, yeah, I don't think anything's going to happen to Snow. And a lot of pressure is going to be applied to Hero right now. Sunken only just now starting to be made, and already the five Zealots going to be forcing out more Lings. And, you know, right now Hero wants to make uh, drones and Scourge and Mutalisks, maybe, and not necessarily floods of Lings. So, with the plus one also kicking in momentarily, you'll be able to trade well against these Lings despite not having speed. Well, he is going to get the big surround here. Hero taking a great engagement, going to make these links pay off you never want to make this many links at this point in the game there's the plus one just finished up now snow can take this engagement it's still probably not going to be a winning one but at least he can trade out pretty reasonably against these links he really does need to get the surround here and finish this off not allowing these to get back home is a necessity right now he gets a pretty good trade. oh man the micro here from snow is insane these zealots are so low Dude, that was about as good as it could possibly have gone there for Snow. Yeah, I, I kind of had Snow read like a book that I thought he would go for something like this. He didn't care about having such a late speed. He just wanted the plus one to kick in right at the optimal moment where he had no speed, but had enough to you know start two-shotting those links and getting value out of just that one gateway worth of Zealot. So now Snow's like kind of in a bit of a... A good situation because he forced a lot of lava into those links so now that's way less uh, economy to worry about for the zerg player not as many drones to worry about and not kind of crazy amounts of muters or hydras at this stage either just a, a flood of scourge to kind of zone out these corsairs from killing overlords and what have you so so far so good for snow but needs to be careful not to lose any of these corsairs Ooh, we're seeing Ooh. some of that micro snow micro here oh uh, we've seen it yeah. in uh, some of the casts before but this is a really hard trick to pull off. Uh, it has yeah, to do with patrol. Yeah, yeah, pa yeah, patrol and manual move commands to keep the, the um, them not deaccelerating and maintaining their motion. So yeah, using patrol and manual move commands to snap the the corsairs around uh, like like they're on like a dime. So they actually turn on a dime rather than like having to like slow down and turn slowly with manual commands. Very hard to do with this many Scourge out. It's not going to be worth it for Snow to stay and try to fight that. He does back up. And that's really all the time that Hero needed to buy there. He keeps the Corsairs at bay until his Hydralists are out in, in high enough numbers to take some fights. Now, the Corsairs are going to try to come in here. Be denied by the Hydras. And this DT is probably not going to get too much damage. I'm liking the defense here from Hero so far, but there's still a lot of play right now for Snow. He's going to try and sneak around, look for some kills. There, he gets two overlords. That was a great yeah. snipe there. It's very hard to keep all your overlords safe in these type of situations. Yeah, when you get to like seven plus Corsairs of plus one, unless you've got Carapace upgrade, those overlords die super quick to those neutron flares. But we do see a, a big flock of Scourge kind of sharking around, seeing if there's any opportunity to try and pounce on to onto these Corsairs. And he's going to try and strike now, I think, while the iron's hot. But the, the Corsairs can still get a good escape vector here. So they're not really too concerned about this. He can still get away of only losing one or two Corsairs in. With good micro in this dead zone, he can actually like micro 
for days against these Scourge, and even going to be coming back in to do some more damage here, just as Hero's moving out. Oh, Hero's moving out right now. He's going to find the Zealots and the DT as well. But how many Overlords is he going to lose back at home? Here comes the Scourge. Oh, the Scourge getting great connections here. Four kills and a fifth happens wow. right at the end of that snow losing a optimal. lot of momentum there yeah that was a great trade of course anytime you can kill something with just a couple of scourge it is a fantastic trade and uh just the utility that those corsairs bring to the protoss is just it, it's massive now he, i mean yeah. snow he can't really take any fights if we just build a couple more scourge these corsairs have to go home yeah, this is a lot more dangerous now for Snow. He's a lot more, he's, he's gambling a lot more than before. Now that he hasn't got the support of the utility of that Corsair fleet, now he's going to just try and see if he can start the evolution chamber here. Now to try and prevent these upgrade timings so the plus one doesn't finish. So we'll be maybe able to win by trading more efficiently, having the upgrade advantage going forward by sniping off these buildings. And on the exit, going to be getting a little bit of a surround on some of these Hydras. Although there is a larger and larger mass of Hydras that are being fielded by um, Hero here. So I'm not sure if Snow's going to have enough forces to take a third base and when he does he might just get slammed by hero at this rate who knows yeah hero oh, will will end up losing a few drones here the run by of course a great move um putting some pressure on to hero while he's micring out on the field and wow these zealots just living forever god they just never want to yeah. die um still finally getting cleared up here comes the fourth base from here this is what i was i was expecting from him was uh, with that base down the bottom right that we would see a really quick fourth and it's going to be a relatively safe fourth as well it's a lot harder to branch out and take a fourth that's far away like down in the bottom right as your fourth base but if you've got your third down there and you take your fourth up in that top right hand corner you've already got defenses down there in the bottom right i, I think this is a pretty good situation here for here we'll see if snow can get in there and break him open though before he sets up this big lurker contain though Right, yeah, this is a pretty late third base for Snow. So even though Snow's done all the damage, been really annoying to Hero, relatively speaking, Hero is actually sitting pretty comfortably and having the high ground with all these lurkers, he's able to get this fourth base online, start pumping out some drones, get his saturation and going into like late game production mode, seven plus hatchery production, going into nine uh, with Hive if he can't do anything about this third base. But I don't know, he did have the choice to go into muters here. He didn't have to go lurkers. If he wanted to, he could have made 10 muters go and snipe high templars and just bowl over snow by killing the high templars with the muters due to the reduced uh, corsair count and then just over flooding him with um hydras here but instead he's going the the macro economic route of just taking a fourth base getting a massive minefield of lurkers and is this gonna be a drop play do you think he'll do a little bit of a drop in the main uh, anytime you see uh, overlords moving like they are right now um you got to start thinking about drop. He's going to have a ton of lurkers on his own high ground, and he's going to throw this drop into the main base. Unfortunately, moving forward with his lurkers at the same time, not having them in position here to defend, he does bring them back to the high ground and holds the position, and the drop is going to get off here in the main. This is a huge play. This is the other way to take advantage of a Protoss player who's lost all of his Corsairs. So much damage here in the main. He's going to go after the Nexus. I mean, we just got the third base up, but this Nexus goes down, reducing Snow back down to just two bases. Meanwhile, he's going to try and push up here onto this high ground. There's a little bit of space that Hero left open. Oh! Oh! 11 kills! This is a huge and there's two drop. There. A huge this drop. This is exactly what you want to do as Zerg. Yeah, he's splitting your lurker drop. So as they transfer the probes to the natural location, there's two lurkers popping out there to get all the kills, even if you don't get the initial kills to the first drop. And beautiful play from here thus, thus far. Like, really doing a good job of storm dodging and splitting his attention in his both offense and defense. Like, dropping and killing all those workers while also defending on this plateau as well. So really impressed by Hero's play so far. He's playing absolutely out of his mind right now, saying currently ahead in support after killing that much of an army and that many econ econ economy of snow back at home as well so everything is going so well for hero master work of a game here from hero the way that he was dodging the storms there at the end of the fight as well you know he didn't allow big uh storms to kind of ruin his advantage here he just carefully considerately dodging all of the storms making sure that he took the best trades possible here and another wave of lurkers is going to come out he's doing exactly what you should here staying on that layer 
uh, tech while just continuing to set up more and more drops. He's even killing off Corsairs here in the main base, and he could go for another drop. He's flying in with the Overlord right now, just seeing the main base with nothing there, and Snow is forced to GG out. Wow. Beautifully done here by Hero. I'm so impressed by Hero. That's like absolutely beautiful Stella's EVP. Like one for the book, I think so. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it felt like he really had a game plan in mind coming into this one, right? He didn't make that middleist mm -hmm. transition, like you said. Uh, he took the base that was kind of uh, unorthodox in order to get his fourth up in a very nice, safe position. Um, he baits the Protoss army into going down to try and poke at that bottom right-hand corner, and then the big drop comes yeah. into the main with a huge lurker uh, wall there on the top of the ramp. Just beautifully done. Really considered, well-thought-out decision-making here from Hero. I wonder if we're going to see more, uh, you know, really well-thought-out plays from the Zerg players this lineup. Like, I mean, it feels like Hero really considered that carefully, uh, how to beat Snow yeah. here. Yeah, I think so as well. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing if they've got more plans up their sleeves that are going to really start to deflate the Protoss lineup here. With Snow going down first, guys, who is Protoss going to send out next? It's a big task here, filling the shoes of Snow. Who can take down Hero? We're about to find out. With Snow going down first, it's going to be Mini sent out here to take on Hero. Of course, our map here, Troy. I, I think this is the right choice, actually, for the Protoss squad. Sending out Mini on Troy, it feels like he's the most yeah. likely to be able to abuse a Zerg player on this map. Right. I think so. I, I, I Mini is very good PvZ and very good at the, you know, the gimmicky styles and very strange timings you can go for with Protoss. Uh, so definitely his wheelhouse and going to be able to confront and recalibrate the Protoss squad to dealing with the the initial really impressive opening from Zerg here. And Hero's going to be feeling like an absolute god after that game. So he's going to be feeling strong and going into this with his A game too, probably. Yeah, when your your game plan just works that well, um, you know, you've got something in mind and you just pull it out perfectly like that, the confidence has got to be flowing at this point. Hero sending out his first Overlord southward. Not going to find many in that direction. Second Overlord is going to be out here, but Mini getting that first scout, he's going to be able to her heavily harass uh, Hero here, trying to take his natural and might even be able to, you know, force him to wait until a uh, group of links can come out here and stop him. Um, meanwhile, back at home, Nexus first. This is a pool first, though. Can no, it's just this? normal forge timing. It, it, you basically make the forge around 13 supply, so you let your minerals bank up a bit. So it looks like you're taking a nexus first, but you actually don't. You're just throwing right. down your forge delayed. So he does get that forge down. The positioning on the minimap there, it kind of looked like he was going to take a nexus, but there it is, the right. forge. Ne nexus is now going to come down, and we're going to get a cannon, I guess, in time here. I'm not sure about the relative rush distances on this map. Well, as long as he starts the cannon by the time the the, the lings are leaving the eggs, it'll finish in time. So there, there we is. see it's yeah. the cannons going down be right before the lings hatch. Yeah. Before the lings hatch is definitely going to be up in time. Some some of these maps, uh, the rush distance is a little bit faster. Right. Um, this is Troy, so uh, I don't know if there's a difference between like vertical or horizontal spawns in terms of the natural to natural distance. Horizontal is a little quicker. But, but not by a lot. Mm. Well, not going to be a factor here. Hero actually gets his third base down. Even with the probe there, kind of ready to, to harass and uh, block that. And Hero takes the third over at that uh, secondary main yeah. base and this this is kind of the play that I would expect from Hero. Yeah, this does set you up to do like a sort of lava um, turtle style. You know, securing mm -hmm. this high ground expansion does give you a free fourth base, a free fourth gas, which is really crazy strong. So we might see a more turtle style out of Hero, potentially. Uh, and But he might have a game plan uh, before that, like similar to what we saw in the last game, where he might have a game plan in mind that if that falls through, he's going to like fall back on playing a more turtle style and take this fourth base. Well, I'm really looking forward to see how many deals with this turtle style. Um, really strong way to play against it is to go for 
uh, Reaver Corsair because you can get such early um, and numerous island bases around the map. You can drop right outside your main. There's a, a, a free base, basically. Um, you know, down in the bottom left, outside of that main, there's another free base there. You could just start dropping probes everywhere and setting up cannons in Nexus that uh, Zerg player can't really deal with for quite a long time. They're going to be sitting back, really turtling up, adding on gates and uh, build, or adding on uh, sunken colonies, excuse me, and getting ready for the, the push that may not come. Um, whereas, you know, Mi Mini could just go for drops. Let's let's see. I'm, I'm really interested to see if he starts this plus one. If he starts the plus one at the front, we'll know no, that it's not Reaver. He did? He started it? No. Yeah. Oh, no, he didn't. He no, he didn't. Did he, he did has one weapons on his Corsairs instead. Okay. He's not taking it yet. So, we'll see if he takes this plus one here at the front on the forge. Because if he doesn't take it... Okay, there's a second Stargate. Oh. This is looking more and more like Reaver. Um, but we'll have to wait and see again. This plus one is going to be the indicator here. If he doesn't take that, we may end up seeing a robo thrown down. There's quite a lot of gas here sitting. Oh, this drone just not moving. Yeah, there we go. Knows. Does get it back to work here. And um, where is that robotic still see still no uh, forge? I'm getting excited here, Shun. This is going to be a fun game. Yeah, yeah this is going to be a really interesting game. We saw, I actually thought he, he took one of his weapons upgrades and he didn't. He threw down the second Stargate in the natural. So yeah, like completely negating his early upgrades and could be potentially going into Sarah Reaver here. And if he does, I'm going to be really excited to see how that pans out for him. Ooh, he's going to see it. Oh, he sees the double Stargate. Uh, Ah, that's, yeah, a little bit unfortunate. That, that's a bit rough here for Mini. We'll probably see, you know, a spore thrown down. We might see an instant uh, armor upgrade on the Spire. Zealots are trying to sneak out here. They almost do a good enough job, but that one Zealot betraying the position here, not going to be able to sneak out past those lings. And um, looks like, you know, Hero's completely ready for this. You should be able to get this around on that. I think he's got enough to, to deal with it. He's going to wait for a few more lings, I guess, before hopping on top of that attack. Yeah, he's going to be hunting down a few of these overlords, momentarily supply blocking heroes. So that's a little bit annoying not to be able to produce units here. He, I, I think he did queue up as many units as possible just before that died. He has got some Scourge out on the map now to hopefully shark and kill one or two of those Corsairs. But Mini's going to be very wise and just make a big fleet. He's even got the probe um, stuck behind the minerals of two pylons so that he can start stacking these Corsairs properly and going to a very high number of them early on so he can start one-shotting these Scourge. That is so many, so many Corsairs. This is going to be really, really deadly if we don't see any um, Spore here. Yeah, there's no Spore, and the Scourge are actually on the other side of the map. This is really, really bad for Hero right now. He's going to lose so many Overlords. There's another one going to go down. Oh, man, this is so painful. Every Zerg player has been in this same situation. There goes one Corsair. Does get picked off. Another one might go down here, too. A little bit of Miss Micro there for Mini. Yeah, yeah, he only had five there about the plus one weapon, so they couldn't actually one-shot the Scourge, and it's all the neutron flares connected simultaneously because the Zerg do regenerate one HP very quickly. So, yeah, look at this, though. No Sunken's online right now. Zelos just going to get through. A little bit of a drill there from Hero to try and prevent that, but only delaying the inevitable. They're going to be getting on top of this Sunken colony before it finishes, and now the Zelos can plug up the gap as well. So, going to be killing this Sunken very quickly and then killing all these Lings as well. Right now, using the wall against the Zerg play, Hero is in a little bit of trouble right now saying and still more and more overlords going down to these courses and i would say a lot of bit of trouble right now shouldn't this is very very bad right now uh, and yeah. the damage is going to continue to stack up uh, he wasn't able to build anything because of that overlord uh, that supply block there um, and now that he's finally able to build something He's busy dealing with these zealots, and more and more overlords are going to keep going down. Even if he clears this, even if he handles all the zealots that are out here right now, and the Corsairs, gets his overlords back online, he is so far behind in the overall drone count. It's insane. Yeah. And the follow-up here is not actually going to be the Reaver play. He is going to go into a gateway explosion. Now there's the plus one. 
uh, spinning here at the front. He will eventually get into that just a bit later with a very early pressure with a huge number of Corsair. This is a, that's a great delineate, delineation of this authoritative oppression of Mini in this game right now, saying I'm very worried for Hero, but he is making a bit of a gambit now, trying to get on top of these cannons, but beautiful pro pool and a few zealots to buff are going to be preventing that from occurring. With the high ground advantage, it's much more difficult to come in here and bust it open this position. If it was a different map, maybe this kind of trick would may have you know been more successful, but as it stands, not going to be the case. I'm really worried for Hero's chances in this game. Now he's got no drones, he's barely got anything mining right now, struggling to saturate his three base economy. Yeah, he can't build anything right now. He was hoping for the bus to end up working there. The, kind of the last hope here of Hero. And there are some overloads on the other side of the map, which Mini hasn't uh, quite picked up on just yet. That's so many Corsairs. My God, a crazy amount of investment into those Corsairs. But um, it's really paid off this game. It's done so so well here for mini and it's almost an unlosable situation at this point with nearly double the supply mini yeah. is in such a fantastic spot as these dt's hit the field all he needs to do is just dive he could just dive 100 percent throw the corsairs in you know maybe lose one or two corsairs but he will take this position um kill all the overlords and get in here if he wants to with the dt's yeah, this is the problem, is that there's like 10 Corsairs here. All he needs to do is dive in, soak up some damage while killing all the, the Overlords, and then the DTs kind of free reign. He's going to instead cycle around and kill the Overlords with the um, uh, Hydra's being out of position here and inflicts him even greater damage onto um, Hero. So, and now he's going to cycle back around and, ki and kill these Overlords and then dive in with the DTs potentially. So no matter what he does, he's going to have a, a good time of it. He could potentially snipe down these DTs maybe in time if he tries to dive all at once, but it's still going to be a bad trade for him no matter what. And even if Mini doesn't attack, I mean, Mini's in a good position no matter what happens in this game. Like like you say, he's like double in supply. He's constantly like supply blocking hero here and there. So he's going up to like three lava on some of these hatcheries despite not like um, not not like I, i'm kind of blown away by how like much control mini's been able to establish in this game like he really run away with it here i don't think hero's got any chance of coming back in this game at least in the next like five to ten minutes i think there's just gonna be he's gonna be just sitting sitting and turtling as much as possible and hoping for the best mini's gonna be taking the island base and bolstering his own position further and further and he's also gonna do a dt drop into the main it looks like Hero's doing exactly what he needs to in order to come back in this game. Oh, is he going to see that? Oh, did he see it? Oh my gosh. Okay, he's got a lot of Hydras. He's got a lot of Hydras here. Ah, oh, the Scourge getting annihilated. Does get the drop, though. Kills off the DTs. No problem. Get the DTs. Oh my god, he's not going to get it. The Overlord is going to get picked oh. off here. He definitely dives on that Overlord the moment that he tries to engage, and yeah, he does. Where's the next Overlord? It's got to be here, right? There it is. He's going to try and kill that before it can come and join up and uh, save the main base here. Uh, big attack down into the bottom right. I mean, Hero's doing everything he could to hold on in this game, but the advantage is just way too big, and this is so many zealots to deal with, with the DTs running around in the main as well. Oh, it is yeah. just so... As a Zerg player, this is this is cringe to watch. My yeah. goodness. GG. Kind of crazy, kind of insane. But it looks like, yeah, I mean, Protoss kind of like flipped flip the script on Zerg already. And like they've recalibrated. And that, and I have a feeling that like the trajectory that, that going forward will be a lot more Protoss favored now. I think like that's, that's a lot of the wind out of the sails for the Zerg. And Mini and Bisu are such PVZ specialists that Action Queen and Sulky have really got their work cut out for them. Yeah, Mini being the right tool for the job here. He pulls out a sick build takes down hero before he can get into that macro play really nice to see uh, mini coming out with some craziness here and uh, i wonder who they're going to send out to actually stomp him who is going to be the right tool for the job to take down mini here we're going to find out what zerg has in store it's coming up right after this all right sending out soul key here yeah dark origin this is a crazy two-player map. These are some wild games in PvZ. Very rare that we ever go like full-on macro on this map. Although I have seen it a few times recently. You know, Desert yeah. player getting up into Hive and 
getting defilers and you know going into that like late game crack army but um it's tough it is tough on this map there's just not a lot of bases for the zerg player to take and uh you know the bases that you can take for example here in this position all along the left hand side of the map are very attackable like they're not that easily defended um no and you still have to hold the middle of the map at the same time uh, you can't really give up the middle <laughs> it's gonna be a nine pool from sulky uh, interesting choice he could do a lot of pressure early on and try and maybe even bust this uh gateway first here from uh, mini yeah we do see the cancel on the gas just getting up that 10th drone and canceling the extractor to uh, get that drone back and we'll probably see some serious oh two gate oh wow wow okay well this is great for soul key then right he's gonna have a bunch yeah. of lings he's gonna be able to put on a bunch of pressure mini can still just build a bunch of zealots and and hold his natural and take a base but he's gonna be under a lot of pressure yeah. Yeah, a lot of pressure for sure. I mean, the the, the, the wind out of the sails of this two gate will, will definitely be a bit of an issue for Mini to overcome, but it's still a micro battle here for both mm -hmm. players. Like, it still can go either way. It's not like one build completely smashes the other. It's just you're not as countered by this two gate as you would usually be. So, yeah, this is going to be a, a little bit of a victory here for Sulky going forward. Uh, I, now his build choice really really does resonate with me a lot more i don't we've think we've got um, a link to deal with this early on i don't think that many realized that this is a nine pool like why would you throw down the pylon right here um uh, it dies so quickly but it does but i guess it delays the hatchery just a little bit so it technically is delaying the production a tiny bit i'm not sure if i agree with it per se but yeah i don't know I mean, maybe he assumed also that he wouldn't initially make the, the six links right off the bat i don't know but mm. I, I, I i kind of agree with you that it's not really that worth but maybe mini's got it mapped out with slowing down the production just a little bit here will give him a bit of an edge in fighting zealot versus Ling. and mini sending in just one zealot as well with a probe i think this is a as well kind of an error don't you think like um sending in at least two to three zealots is usually how a two gate uh, can end up being successful he luckily gets behind the mineral patches at least but this zealot's gonna get cleaned up way before oh great move great move there by sulky getting in behind he's handling this perfectly and mini is having a hard time right now he's gonna try and get on the ramp to take a great trade here um you can just drill with yeah. like a drone though yeah we're gonna get drones out here i think that sulky just gonna get enough gas for speed and then he's just gonna get rid of uh or you're gonna stop mining that that gas now doing a great job Beautiful. messing up the uh m the micro the ai here oh but one drone does go down yeah. still really really well handled here by sulky yeah absolutely phenomenal play i have to say like he, he does lose one single drone which is some compensation for mini but honestly clearing up the zealots this a finish efficiently and having all these zerglings remaining to catch the the other remainder zealots these zealots are forced to like run and hide at the third base for example they're going to come in and do a bit of a counter attack and see if they can get some run by uh, damage done but the front is that threat right now there's no cannons there's, there's not even that much of a wall going on so it's gonna be really tough for mini to hold this pressure yeah, this is going to be bad for Mini. Um, he's hiding these zealots over here. They're going to get spotted by a drone. And it's just pure Ling production behind this. He pulled off a gas. He went for speed. Uh, throwing away a couple of Lings right now. But he's got Lings back at home still. He's going to try and take this third now. And he should absolutely clean this up. And afterwards, he can just run across the map and start to deal some real damage here if Mini's not in perfect position to hold it off. If he's not... You know, ready for this counterattack. He's going to be in a lot of trouble. Here we go. Counterattack coming in. Just pure Ling production from Soul Key here. And he's going to go after the pylon. If he gets that pylon, we're basically dead. So Mini just going to head back home with all of his zealots. But just more and more Lings coming out here. Non-stop Ling production right now from Soul Key. He is going for it right now. 
Yeah, but he's starting another pylon in desperation as well. He knows that there's a risk of this pylon going down. He's trying to buy as much time as possible, slowing down the incoming links and just barely getting these two zealots out before that pylon comes down. So we'll have the maximum threshold of zealots needed to fight this. But honestly, like this is still not going to be enough. Like Sulky can maneuver around this and still get behind these zealots potentially. He has got the zerglings in the main coming down to help and get a full surround on these four zealots. Another two zealots are about to pop out, but not quite in time. And just as they do come out of these gateways, the Sulky's going to be on top of them already so so far so good for sulky gonna be start targeting down these pylons as well to cut off that production from mini and already this is looking like a big threat that mini's not gonna be able to overcome yeah just constant production is all we need right now um two bases enough here for sulky to take down mini mini underestimating this build here i feel like he just didn't understand what was coming um from the pylon getting thrown down to to block the hatchery to uh, the first zealot just kind of running in. It felt like a mishandle here from Mini being a little overconfident with the two gate play. And now it's just pure Ling from Solki. He's not going to stop here. You're just going to eventually get overwhelmed. It's pretty good defense out of Mini. And he even builds a shield battery. So there is a tiny bit of hope with that shield battery. Yeah, there's some hope there. Um, but we've got, I mean, just so many Lings coming across right now. And he's now got like what is this 10 lings in the main there comes two more he's gonna have to split yeah. between defending in the natural and defending in the main and eventually sulky's gonna find an opening and, and tear him apart yeah see nothing back at all. now getting caught he, he's trying to like transfer his defenses into the main base with these zealots and yeah. now he can pick off one or two of those zealots and he can really start to delay the mining of mini here and pull him which way mini's gonna try and put a cannon in his main mineral line to kind of stabilize but how is he going to defend the gateways in the natural as well it's like a really weird situation he's gonna good surround on those links with those pros eventually the zealot does go down now it's much easier to target fire down these pros when there's no zealot to glitch out the ai and going to be getting on top of this cannon as well that's going down the mineral line why those pros were distracted and if he does get the yeah, he does get the cancel on that cannon as well and also there's nothing in the natural to defend so really hard for mini to stabilize he's making the best of it but more and more links starting to flood and now the links can come from the high ground into the natural expansion in the moment and pressure even more so it's going to be really tough for mini to stabilize trying to task switch between defending the main against those running around circling he does manage to clean those up in the main but look at the natural expansion now these zealots now all but dead there's a little bit of energy left on the shield battery to try and keep them alive but only one zealot now remaining for mini yeah, targeting down the probes here is the right choice. He finally does get the surround on the final zealot, and GG is called. Sulky takes out Mini here. Very early game rush here. Nine pool paying off dividends. You can really mm. tell that uh, Mini here planned for Sulky's 12 hatchery play. He wanted to get that damage. He wanted to throw him off with that two gate, but was not ready for the nine pool here. Okay, some questionable decision-making there from Mini in that last game, but definitely some great planning and execution on the side of Solki. He really knew what he needed to do from that position, and he handled it brilliantly. Here, going to start with another early pool. It's not a nine pool though this time it's going to be an over pool here from soul key and he's going to go ahead and push this front here with the first drone meanwhile bisu being sent out next the strongest i think protoss versus zerg player that uh, we have here in this squad can he actually Absolutely. take down the, the champion right now? <laughs> it would be... I, I think no matter what happens, we're probably going to see a very strong game from both players. I'm really excited to see exactly what transpires between these two. Uh, so so far, Sulky's got a lot of momentum behind him. So, I mean, I'm feeling pretty confident about Sulky's chances, but Mini is an absolute PVZ god. He basically invented how we approach the matchup. It's been, you know, adjusted over time and what have you and revamped to be a little bit different, you know. You see a gateway first variants now rather than just always forge the first variants. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, he basically designed how we approach this matchup and it does seem to be pretty optimal. So, yeah, this guy knows this matchup in side and out and he's the og definitely the og here uh, has been showing some fantastic progress as well in uh, recent times like we've got some ogs in the starcraft scene that don't quite measure up to their old success be soon not one of those guys like he is still at the very very tip top especially in this matchup um he's gonna be looked to here as the savior for protoss right now because they're 
in a bit of trouble in the current state of this finals. Zealots are going to be sent back home here. Bisu not going to take any chances, you know, risking one Zealot out on the map. Some some Protoss players will do that, you know, just take one Zealot, throw it out on the map, try to hide it. Um, but instead here, Bisu pull, pulling them all together. He's going to move out with three now and yeah. try to put on enough pressure to force out a few extra links and then try to turn around and go back home before those links actually connect with these zealots. He's actually turned them around pretty early here. And I don't think he's forced anything out of Soki. Wait, okay, more links do pop. So maybe he did force well, Soki, a little bit of reaction. Well, yeah, Soki did have... He, uh, he, he's going to make a couple of extra links anyway, just to be super safe. But mm. if he really wanted to min-max, he could, like, you know, call Bisu's bluff and, like, only make drones still. But that's still a little bit of risky. He also wants to deny this probe scout coming into the main base. So wants to have enough links blocking that ramp and being able to chase down the probe. So he can kind of disguise as much of his build as possible in this stage of the game and trying to take advantage of his scouting at um, early edge in the game by you know seeing exactly when the, the zealots turn around and what have you but eventually the bc will be able to scout him much more efficiently when this corsair comes online in a minute or two mm. i really do feel like this was uh, a nice bluff by bisu that kind of caught Solki here. He made six extra lings uh, just to block that probe and chase it around. I don't think so. Six lings is a pretty serious investment um, yeah. this early on. Uh, it's the right amount if you wanted to kill three zealots that were moving across the map, but those three zealots are back at home. He's keeping a bunch of lings on the left-hand side here. He could run by right as it's coming. No, he pulls the, the links forward. This is a mistake. He was keeping these to the side so that he could try to uh, dive in on top of the, or, or dive in past the cannon right as the uh, zealots started to come out. And he, he like puts them on a hotkey and pulls them back right as the zealots are coming out here and gets caught. This is a little bit rough for Sulky right now. He's built quite a few links and Beast is just going to turn around, back up, go back home. Did Soul Key react again. He did. Oh my gosh. All right. This is okay. this is really rough now for Soul Key. He built a lot of links now. And if Bisu just sits at home, I mean, Soul Key's going to be in a ton of trouble here. Yeah, absolutely. Like, if Bisu just sits and scouts with the Corsair, sees that there's not that many drones mining, and sees the timings, he's going to know just how good of a position that he's in. This is like, yeah, one of the worst case scenarios for Soul Key if Bisu doesn't move out with these Zealots and gets caught. And Bisu should be waiting until this plus one, or at very least until this second cannon finishes and the Corsair's confirmed what's going on. So I don't think is going to be moving out anytime soon, basically. Solki got bluffed here. Bisu did a fantastic job selling it that he was about to go across the map. And he's still sitting inside the natural. Um, after, you know, two, three little bluffs there. He's going to get the full scout of information. He sees everything. Uh, he's going to get an overlord here. Everything's a little bit slowed down from Solki. He knows uh, how many... Um, hatcheries have been made and now moving out with a number of zealots that actually can't be beaten back by just this, you know, two control groups of lings. Um, uh, he could catch a zealot here though. I think he's catching one right now. He did get the full surround on one of these zealots. Great surround there from uh, Solki. That's going to make up a little bit of this deficit right now. Oh, absolutely. I mean, just slowing down Bisu over and over again. He's made these zealots turn around so many times. He's only got a few Corsairs and these Lings out on the map, so yeah. If he, he can also sandwich these uh, Corsairs on the left-hand side with these Scourge on the right and flank them. And if he catches two of these Corsairs here, that's going to be huge, but I think he'll only get one at, ma at most, and he might not even get that. Yeah, here we go. Looking for that connection. Not able to get it just yet, but Bisu, he's kind of trapped here in the top corner. Can he maneuver out of this? Oh, Oh my gosh, the Jukes, the Happy Feet is going to be able to get out of here potentially. Yeah, the Happy Feet trajectory shift is like on point here for Bisu. So far, so good. Just, just trying to get interception with these still. Let's get one Scourge connected, but in range of the cannons now. and not going to be losing any Corsairs. Really beautifully uh, navigated by Bisu. Meanwhile, moving out with the Corsairs. There is a Sunken here and about a control group worth of Speedlings, but potentially um, we'll be able to cycle around to the third base and put on pressure there, or at the very least force out a few more units 
minutes out of Soul Keep. There is actually going to be a mutilus transition coming online. So if he can maybe still, if he can still snipe just one or two of those Corsairs and, you know, disguise the fact that he has got these uh, mutilus coming out, maybe Soul Keep can still make something work here. But there's so many Corsairs already. There's a ton of Corsairs here. And, I mean, more Scourge are going to pop out. I don't know if we have plus one armor here on the way. It wouldn't surprise me, though. This is a pretty serious commitment. We've already got the third gas online, so it's really looking like that may be uh, in the cards here for Solki. That might be what he has in mind. See that third gas mining right now? That's a surefire sign that we're going to see a lot of tech, whether that's Lurkers or Mutas. Um, looks like it's going to be Mutas here. Do we have that armor coming? Plus one is done here. Beast is going to trade very, very well until a, an armor upgrade comes through for these Mutas, and I'm not sure if it's going to come through in time. He's moving out. He sees all of these Zealots, but also Bisu sees the Mutas and the Scourge here. He's going to try and take a good trade where he can actually gun down all the Scourge before the fight occurs. He's going to get a pretty decent trade right now. Oh, the pullback. That was a beautiful pull away with that one Corsair. It's so low right now. It ate one Scourge, and he just eats up all of those Scourge. Oh my god! Wait a second! Brutal, brutal damage here on all of these Mutalists. Yeah, they have got plus one Carapace now, but already taking so much free damage. Those Mutalists took like half of their HP already, and one went down, and now um, looking really worried for Sulky because, uh, I mean, Bisu's got only one Stargate pumping out these Corsairs, but it doesn't matter. He's still got like a fleet of like eight or nine Corsairs strong with plus one, uh, able to like shoot down all these Scourge effortlessly. And making these mutas really redundant already in this matchup. And the Zealot Archon now able to put on a lot more threat on the front. With that Archon to support the Zealots, they're no longer at risk of just being mowed down and chipped away at by these mutalisks either. So could be trying to get a few of these Corsairs. Does manage to get one there, but still throwing a lot of lava and um, Scourge at the wall to try and see what sticks. And not a lot is sticking right now. Still eight Corsairs strong in this fleet, mowing down stray overlords and putting on a lot of threat here. And these mutas are sharking around to see if they can find some Stray Templars or something, but they're going to get pincered here by these Corsairs. Mm, I like the idea here from Sulky. He's actually going to dive on top of the Templar in the natural. He gets one. He gets two. Not bad, okay. actually. This is all right for trading out the Midas. They're not going to do anything in uh, a potential fight here, but uh, they do end up going down. And now it's time for Bisu to put on the pressure. He's going to yeah. come across the map now very, very soon. He won't have any Templar with this fight, but it's going to be really hard, scary and hard to keep your overlords al alive here if uh, Bisu pressures, pressures the front or the third base. If he just yeah. runs in here, he's already got armor. He's got a lot of zealots here. If you try to take a fight, he's going to kill every single overlord. Yeah, well, the issue is now that we've seen a lot more Templars churning out of Bisu, we can no longer rely on the Sim City and Wall of our expansions as mm -hmm. Soul Key. We have to engage out in the field so we can't just get stormed to death by being like blocked into our own bases. So now Sulky six hatch hydro production has to like really kick into high gear and he has to try and find some better trades out on the map while taking this fourth base. But it's gonna be really difficult for him because Bisu's taken the high ground for free and has some, uh, not a lot of Templar support here, but has just barely enough units to maybe like, you know, be, uh, be able to get away without dying here. And that's all that Bisu needs to do is just to not lose his army. And then he's gonna be in a good position. It looks like this fourth base is gonna go down. We saw Bisu try to get on top of the overlords there oh it dies that's oh, really nice. really rough lurkers are out now soul key i mean he can push forward right now we are gonna have uh observers coming up soon and we've got cannons here already so i don't think he can uh shove in and actually break he, i think he needs to just take a fourth base here i don't know if we can actually break through right now he is gonna get lurkers nope, into just, range yeah. oh the oh. storm is insane yeah, and he lost one of the lurkers on a bad rally up there as well. A little bit, a little bit unfortunate, but he knows there's a timing where there's no observers here, just these cannons. So if he can bust down these four cannons, the lurkers can run in and be a nightmare. But Bisu has got this observatory finishing up right now, so observer will be on the way. Not that many units here for Bisu, though. There's a chance that he might actually lose this expansion position. Only a couple of storms on the way, not yet able to activate. Another 10 or so seconds before those storms come online, and Sulky takes the high ground position away. Going to be running on top, trying to snipe these high templars before they get the storm. Does get the high templar before the storm comes back online and getting some of these.
these probes on the exit transfer as well. So if Sulky can hold the position and kill this next, is he looking pretty good, his own? Oh my god, Sulky breaks through that. Absolutely insane. We saw some of the just beautiful storms there. Some of the greatest storms I've seen uh, on top of masses of hydras, but the dodge was pretty good. He pulled out in time, and he had those two lurkers in the background that just ate the zealots alive as they tried to dive on top of the hydras, and he breaks through that position. He's going to get this DT as well. Soul keep playing a wow. masterful game here. Even from kind of a difficult position, managing to make it work. He's got a lot of lurkers out in the front now as well. He's going to shut down all the moves from Bisu. He's losing all of his Corsairs now. Looks like Bisu actually going to take this high ground for free. So he can probably set, set up here on the high ground and just kind of camp. But this is still rough. Oh, the lurkers are going to die right up here at the front. This is a great trade for Bisu. Just picking those off immediately. Now it's just pure Hydra. Versus a lot of zealots. Oh no, the storm! He he's not yeah. able to throw down the storm. He loses the Templar. He hasn't got much energy to work with as well. Like a lot, even though he's got quite a few high Templars right now, they've only got like one storm apiece, and some of them are just barely getting those storms online. So, really unoptimal uh, timings there for BC to work with. And right now, so far, so good for Sulky. He's, he's killed this third base. He's getting his fourth base online. If he can just trade any kind of cost efficiency here he's going to be looking good but he needs to be careful not to bunch up these hydras too much and get stormed to death he's going to try and attack from three positions at once lurkers and hydras from the south hydras and uh, to the north and west as well see if he can pin to this army from three sides so far so good with the storms though there's not a lot of storms left in reserve though he needs to storm dodge a little bit better than this he's lost too many of these clumps of hydras to keep fighting here even though there's not much storm left in reserve for bc but he's still going to try and push the issue regardless but i don't think he wants to be too uh too ballsy here i think he needs to just kind of maintain game State, get this full base online and transition because beast can be mined out soon that was insane i mean this is such a hard thing to pull off as a zerg player you're hitting from three different angles um and you just can't keep your screen over everything at the same time it's so hard to storm dodge uh when you're in a position like this it it seems like a great idea to hit from so many angles and, and pull the Protoss player apart, but pra in practical terms, it's very, very tough to pull off, and a lot of the times, you're just going to eat uh, so much storm damage, it's going to not be worth it for you. Now, going to come in with a bunch of lurkers here, very stacked up. Do we have a storm for this? Oh, the storm goes down on the Hydras. The Hydras got to bunch up on top of each other. This is a great trade, once again, for Beastu, but he's running low on storm. He doesn't have any storms behind this, and there's still quite a few lurkers here, plus all these hydras pushing up. Can Sulky actually break through once again? And at this critical moment, Bisu's now just starting to become mined out in his mind out in his main, and his natural is also just about to be mined out as well. So going to be reset onto one base worth of production momentarily here. So, and Zerg takes a lot longer to mine out. So there's going to be a, a window where Zerg has basically four bases worth of economy to just the Protoss's one. So Sulky can now try to like you know hammer down on this position and. Take Take full advantage of this fact and really start to force as, as many trades as possible and eventually uh, bisu is going to run out of steam if that continues bisu here moving forward getting a little bit antsy from his position he does get some good storms down and will make the archon as well but more hydras coming up here and there's just no storm behind this to kind of assist uh in this retreat here the archon that he made is going to go down for free right there and i just don't see any templar with this army he needs splash to be able to push out at all and sulky is taking more bases he's getting more lurkers here like you said he's on four bases now and here's bisu transferring everything to one yeah it's gonna be a rough situation now there is a window here where um maybe bisu can make a few gambit plays if he can stabilize a little bit and get 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 like maybe a shuttle out it's possible he could do a storm drop and put a dent into sulky enough to kind of you know claw a bit of a comeback here while taking Taking a fourth base, it's not like lights out for Bisu just yet, but right now it's going to be really difficult because now it, the onus is on Bisu to attack because Sulky can just sit back, keep expanding, and go into pure macro mode. And Bisu doesn't want to allow that to happen anymore because Bisu's been completely destabilized in his economic curve of the game. His fourth base is super late. He's now only got one base worth of production, so it's going to be really tough for Bisu to claw his way back into this game because Sulky's going to switch into a lot more of a passive game state. Yeah, Bisu, he wants to trade right now but he does not want to get surrounded that's the danger if he comes up to any of these areas if he tries to push up onto this high
high ground here on the left hand side uh, I mean either way he has to push up onto a high ground so neither location is looking good but if he pushes into one the Zerg can just flow out of the other and surround the entire army and that could be a losing situation for bees too so oh this is a great play diving on top of the Z uh, Templar there with the Zerglings not able to get it though and probably won't be able to shut down this cannon either uh, Bisu taking the safe route right now um just kind of sitting back here not really trading with the army and building up into a fourth base but this is just giving sulky so much time he is going to get such an economy online with the hive here coming up he's probably going to go into double evolution chamber for the triple upgrades here in just a few moments and this is going to have a really hard time keeping up with now you know, being eclipsed here in supply, 130 to 144. Yeah, I think um, Sulky's a little bit concerned that Bisu will turn this into a super late game and maybe get these island bases eventually. So I imagine that um, Sulky's going to establish some control over this uh, three o'clock location and try and make sure there's no chance in hell that Bisu gets like you know a sneaky shuttle down there, uh, especially to do storm drops in the main and the third base location. And uh, the fact that. He, Sulky's in such a good position. It's also like kind of made Bisu hesitant to take this top left base first. So Bisu's first going for this mineral only, which actually is not the, the best of bases to take. And it's not got that many patches. The minerals aren't so uh, optimal as well. So not really going to be the best uh, um, expansion for Bisu to take in this position to get his e economy off the ground. And that's purely because of how it's more defendable right now. Like he's not at risk of dying by taking that. So that's why he's elected to do so. But it's actually not going to give him much of a comeback potential as he would like. Lurker pot holes just spotting the ground all over this left hand side of the map right now. Sulky gonna pull the army of Bisu here over to the left hand side, and a move like this is a great opportunity. Oh, oh, the storm on his own Templar. He actually kills one of them. And luckily, he doesn't lose two there. It was really, really close, but. Uh, it's a great opportunity to move forward and take that high ground position in the center left. And I think that we're going to see Sulky make another move like that soon and try to take that spot. It's possible, yeah. I mean, Sulky's going to go straight into the fire list and we're going to see Chain Plague soon. While also um, Sulky pushing up on this left-hand flank to isolate this 9 o'clock base pocket to both establish his own gas advantage and also prevent Bisu from establishing his own. Uh, and he'll also be able to use these defilers to just constantly like rain down plagues and dark swarms on these expansions to keep assaulting Bisu passively without having to commit too many forces and will eventually just out muscle Bisu out of this game it looks like 184 supplied to 150 very Zerg favored it does get this drone shut down on the left he wasn't aware there was a DT there a bit of an oversight so slowing down that expansion by about a minute or so is a little bit of a small win there for Bisu but honestly he needs something a lot bigger than this and with the plagues coming out moment um, I'm imagining Consume's just finished. Uh, it's going to be really rough here for Bisu in the coming phases. 1-1 one, one is already done for the Lings, and Crack should be coming online here in just another moment. We went for plus three armor for Bisu, and that's really not going to matter much once we get the plagues going like you're talking about. Um, that We're just moments away from that now. A Dark Storm should come up uh, just, to, just to hold this position right now. Storm's being thrown down, but the trades are just brutal right here for Bisu. It's so hard uh, to fight through something like this and with a uh, supply deficit here my soul is just looking so fantastic. The ringer in the PvZ matchup here, Bisu is just going to get taken out by Sulky right here right now. It really looks that way. It's going to be devastating if that happens because, I mean, Best isn't going to fare much better against this lineup and they might still be forced to revive um, Bisu or Mini and it's probably going to be Bisu and they're not going to feel as confident about that re revive after this showing. And and this is Sulky's absolute A-game a wheelhouse of play. Like, he loves these late-game macro scenarios where he can just sit back and churn out units and get maxed out as Zerg. Uh, like, he's really good at this style of play. So Bisu's not feeling it right now. He's got a lot of pressure. He's not even mining this gas in the top left just yet. Like, kind of everything going against him. And I don't know if this this hill is going to be surmountable for Bisu. He's now going to start eating a lot of plagues and trying to trade into this big spread out lurker field is like almost impossible. Man, that plague just brutal right now. So many zealots getting doused there with the red sauce. That is that is so rough. Another one goes down. Ling's unmasked right here. Maxed out army. Another plague. 
This entire army has just been plagued, and Lings are going to annihilate it so quickly if they manage to connect onto some of these units. We don't have Storm to just nuke them immediately. The Lings are going to tear everything apart. <gasps> oh, shit. He's doom. Oh, Big drop. Doom drop. Doom drop time. Yeah, baby. It's what we like to see. Like, Sulky's a fan of the podcast, it seems. We might be seeing a little bit of a doom drop action in the main base while the army's distracted out in the field. There's so many Zerg forces that it doesn't matter if he commits, like, 10 overlords worth of units. Like, he's got so much out on the field, he can still beat um, Bisu's army head on here. This is going to be really rough because Bisu's going to commit everything to fighting this right now, and he's going to have, like, a mass amount of overlords just popping out into his main base and destroying his infrastructure momentarily. Oh, another great plague here. He does have all the tools necessary to hold back Bisu right now. He's just going to keep him at bay while this drop comes in. Yeah, even if Bisu just commits everything to this attack here on the left-hand side, there's no way he breaks through. That's a lot of cannons. Wow, look at all the cannons here in the main. I was not expecting yeah. that many from Bisu. That's actually going to help out a lot against this mass crackling drop. Oh, my. Oh, that storm was insane. Yeah, now, but now look at that. Sulky sees it's an opportunity to move up. If he can make sure his, his lurkers aren't too stacked here, this will be a good maneuver. But he needs to be careful because if the lurkers are like too stacked up, we can start to kill like two, three lurkers per storm. Uh, this will this will be a little bit of a window fall. What's going on right now? There's no vision here to see up the hill to shoot these side Templars. This is a really weird situation. You usually don't see that. They're all low HP as well. Absolutely brutal. Like, ah, oh, man. Like, there's just something there to spot the high ground. We're gonna be getting this uh, Robo support bay tech offline by killing that with a few cracklings in the main base so getting some value from that drop it, it I, I, i'm kind of blown away by just how much zerg there is out on the map right now like bisu eventually will just get swallowed up even these island bases on three o'clock being taken by sulky to keep ramping up his economic prowess in this game and sniping off these individual units is going to pay dividends the longer the game goes on because he's trading mineral units for gas units and that's going to really favor him the longer this game goes on yeah this is this is insane i mean we could see soul key like throw away so many units that it starts to get bad for him like this is pretty rough oh my Whoa. god why does zergs do this man they make the mistake of like repositioning the lurkers and then just borrowing them all stacked then the pros just storms them all for free it's like what are we doing here yeah this is this is the types of trades that can actually throw a game um we're not quite at throw we're not we're, we're not quite at that point yet i think we're still at such an advantage here sulky that uh, we can take right. even more of these trades and and still feel okay but look at all the archons that have been put together that is a serious archon army that's like uh, as late game as it gets with that many archons yeah. here in the fray well, he, he had his Reaver tech a little bit disrupted, so he needs something extra splash on the ground besides just Storm to soak up this flood of Zerglings from Sulky. Without these Archons, he could just churn out mountains of Zerglings to throw at Bisu. Still getting beautiful plagues on his army. With the Reaver transition, though, it will make it a lot harder to attack into these positions, so Sulky will probably switch into being a little bit more passive again, just securing these island bases and keeping Bisu set on these bases that he's got right now and preventing him from getting any anything more and trying to contain the threat but that will give bisu some potential at like you know some you know special tactics mini games where he slowly claws his way back into this game by using this uh, late game tech army with the reavers the archons and storm yeah this is i mean if sulky loses this game he's gonna be checking that replay to watch how many lurkers went down in some of these fights the the trading has just been brutal uh, since he got this big advantage. Here we go with the shuttle. Reaver is pushing forward here. Zealot Archon Reaver. Pretty darn good composition. He's going to dive on top of more of these lurkers. Staying underneath this Dark Storm. He's actually using it against the Zerg player right now. Oh, the Storm. Just barely not in time. Old Storm Egg was a little bit late to the party here. If he'd gotten that Storm just a few seconds earlier, he could have killed all of those eggs. But unfortunately, they hatch and the lurkers get away scot-free there. Very, very nice uh, for Soul Key. Finally getting some luck uh, with the Storms not quite landing. And now, pushing over here to the left-hand side. Can he actually make any progress? The uh, shuttle is going to get taken out, I think. It does. So the Reavers are kind of stranded here. This is going to force BC to push and make a, a concerted effort to actually break this location. But there's just so much Zerg right now. 
And behind this, there are mountains of Zerglings and Hydras just waiting to join the party. All of the Protoss army is going to end up going down. Everything's surrounded. That 13 kill Archon, the last to go, but he falls as well. And Bisu falling back now onto his mere three base economy, whereas Soul Key is just spreading out all over the map. Well, wow, Sulky's like opening up like his own little foster care for these Pearls players, it seems like. And he's just got like an answer for dealing with these kids, man. I'm kind of blown away by Sulky. Like he was in a really bad spot earlier and he's made this game look easy against an absolute PVZ god of a man. So I don't know how, what more can you say? Like this is absolutely like championship tier play from a championship kind of player. Mm -hmm. That uh, moment when he took out the third base from Bisu, that was a... I think a do or die moment from Solki, and he did. And I think Bisu is about to die. That last observer goes down and he spots the base over in that center right. I'm not sure if he knew about that before then, but I think his heart's probably sinking if that's the first hit, um, him learning about it. Some storms going down here in the main, cleaning up these lings very efficiently. But it's really not efficiency that Solki is looking for. He's just looking for any sort of kills, just distractions uh, for Bisu yeah. here while he continues to macro up ungodly amounts of units and get ready for the final attack. He's even going to kill this base over here with just a few lings. Another yeah. play goes down just abusing this Protoss uh, you know, slow moving army. Another great plague there. Oh my god. Yeah, it's just brutal to watch how efficient um, Sulky's being at some junctions of the game. There's others where it's just so much for him to micro and manage that he's throwing away units here and there. But he's so far ahead that it doesn't really matter. Like he's he's able to he's got so many so many piles of mud to throw at the wall, and like he's able to like even if like most of the mud's not sticking, eventually the wall's just covered with mud, and Bisu's desperately trying to scrape it off, saying, and he's not able to do so. The wall's becoming dirtier and dirtier as we progress. I mean, he, we got we got the presidential promise of building the wall, but there was no mention of maintaining the wall. Oh man, Shun, we need a chili sauce meme reference here right now that's just covering everything. All of Beast's army is deep in the red here. Uh, the, there's just so much, so much, so much value out of all of these defilers and the creep of lurkers coming forward slowly but surely beast is trying to hold back the tide but he just can't do anything about this he's just slowly leapfrogging forward i like to see this a lot better from sulky than running forward and just you know diving underneath these storms yeah, I mean, like we were saying, though, he's so far ahead that this is when you can do that kind of thing. Like, There are situations where you're more on even footing or only slightly ahead and you make these kind of plays and it really does start to give the Protoss win to come back. But look at this, like, even if he's trading, like, three control groups of Zerglings, as long as he's getting the plagues off, as long as some of these gas units are going down, Bisu's just not able to keep up with this production. And the longer the game goes on, the more these bases around the rest of the map will become mined out and Bisu will now be reset onto less and less economy. So he's stagnating and dwindling, whereas Sulky's uh, either maintaining or growing in terms of relative wealth and production capabilities. So like, eventually, like Bisu will be run dry here. And like, and Sulky's, if you want to reference it, he's opening up his own foster care kebab shop and like the, the chili sauce is free. They just like throw it on you as you walk into the kebab shop. You don't have to like wait to order food. They just throw the, the chili sauce on you as you walk in the door here, Sam. Look at the zealots lining up for the chili sauce. Here they come. They're all hungry, ready for it. And Abisu is ready to supply it, setting up some more uh, plague plays here and actually hitting this left corner base. I think this might be the final blow. Yeah, Beast is just going to pull the trigger here right as he sees that base is about to go down. He's just going to go for the kill right now. Try to break over here into the center left. Take that base away from Sulky. It's just not going to happen. Taps out. GG. Bisu, the ringer. The Protoss versus Zerg. Ringer here. Or their lineup has just been taken down. What are 
the Protoss player's going to do here. They've been dominating this entire season, and now it's looking this bad. Crazy. This is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely insane. insane. Like, the same thing that happened to Terran is happening to Protoss right now, saying, like, all season long they've been dominating. It's like, this old, it's like the Zerg had, like, like, little smirks on their face the entire season. They were, like, just, like, happy to take it all, all weeks long, and then they, they just knew that it was coming. You know, they had all this, like, semifinals and finals strategy planned out from the start. It's looking bleak here for Protoss. His best steps into the arena. Here he is, spawning in the top right-hand corner. His opponent here, Soul Key, on an absolute tear right now, looking for that first place prize. Looking to take it home for the Zerg right now, and he's just about there. This is this is his chance. Yeah, I mean, he's, I mean, this is, I mean, unless Snow gets revived, he won't get the all kill, but um. It'd be nice if, like, you know, he went out first and was all killing the Protoss right now, like, took out Snow Mini and Bisu all in a row. Like, can you imagine the the pure euphoria you'd be feeling if that was the case? Didn't Hero take down Snow? Am I, am I getting that wrong? That's what I'm saying, yeah. So it's a shame that Sulky didn't oh, manage to right, get, right. Uh, get in on the action himself. Yeah. Gotcha. If he had yeah. Take, yeah, if he had taken all three, he'd be feeling, like, absolute man of the evening right now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this guy, he's the man in all of our hearts. This guy has just been dominating the scene for the past uh, year or so. Absolute pinnacle of play. We knew he could do it after being a StarCraft II champion for so long and dominating that scene, able to come back to Brood War and make it happen here again. Now, going to solidify his legacy even further by potentially taking down this entire squad after a dominant season from Protoss. Car carrying, absolutely backpacking the Zerg over the finish line here, potentially. Best. Scouting all the way around the map. He's not going to find Solki until the last, and it's a nine pool here with Lings on the way. How is Best going to be able to react? How is he going to be able to handle these early lings. Is he going to be able to get this zealot back home or are we going to see this get caught? I think he's going to figure out, yeah, he's going to get the probe in here just as the lings pop out. So he will know, he will be able to turn this zealot around, head back home, get it in the wall, have one zealot here to defend the pylon, <coughs> to defend the pylon one zealot to hold this ramp and he should be okay here. Yeah, this is a little bit of worst case scenario for best though. He did last scout um, Sulky and Sulky had uh, the best overlord trajectory uh, with his starting position. So it does allow him to get away with making the hatchery without being blocked, uh, to see the, the Zealot coming out perfectly, to have the exact amount of links without having to overcommit and what have you. So this is like most ideal, optimal position for Sulky given the current game state. So a little bit worried for best um, going forward, but we'll have to see how the how the game goes. I mean, Bess is a pretty strong macro player. He will be the kind of guy to try and make a square block fit through the circle hole, though. So if he does win this game, it might be in a very strange, like, Hulk Gorilla Smash kind of way. Much more known for that in Protoss versus Zerg, but I definitely agree with you. He has uh, a way with blocks, you might say. He, uh, he does sometimes make that square peg hit fit through that round hole occasionally more than that actually more than occasionally he's often making us uh wonder with mouth agape how the hell he's breaking through any of these positions but that's just the magic of best now getting the cyber nice score here at the front that's going to help if there's any sort of hydralis buzz but i don't think that's actually coming here is it no, I don't think so. So far, I don't see anything that indicates that. It would be too late to go for that now. If you throw it down um, at 3 minutes 30, it's early enough to do a lot of damage. If you throw it down 4 minutes or later, yeah, that's not going to do anything anymore. You're looking at a much more full hatch hydra timing if you're throwing it down that late. So it's like we're not going to be seeing that coming out. Um, but he did commit to a lot of zerglings early on, did Sulky. So similar situation as before. Um, by committing to these circlings, but he does seem so good at navigating any situation regardless of being at a bit of a deficit. 
in the economy early on against Protoss players from the previous game. So I'm not mm -hmm. really worried for him as much as I would usually be. Like it seems that he's really got it figured out how to like squeeze out the bare minimum of economy still that he's going to be okay almost regardless of what happens. Yeah, it's, it, it feels like he's almost so confident or so good. It, yeah. You can see it out of uh, some players who are, they, they just feel like they're actually better than their opponent uh, in the mid and late game. It's like they don't mind taking uh, some damage economically by, you know, being forced to build extra units. They're, they're just okay with it. As long as I'm safe and I can make it to the mid game and late game, I know I can win. That feels like the mentality here for Solki. He's built a right. ton of lings, even though he didn't have to. Um, just to make sure that, you know, if there's zealots here, if the zealots actually do push out and they don't turn around, if it's not a bluff, then I can handle it. And if it is a bluff, I'll take the hit. I'll be a little bit behind, but we'll figure it out in the mid game. I I have to say those are the players I respect most on the ladder. When I see them like understanding the behavior tree and like, oh, you could ling run by me at this time. So I need to like pull SCVs preemptively just in case you do, because they know it's a possibility at that timing. You know what I mean? Mm. And I love the I love the hedging of the bets here from Best. He's doing the thing that I've advised pros players to do, where you make the third cannon just as a safety net, and then you cancel once you scout with the Corsair, and you can confirm there's nothing coming. It's a really good way of like optimizing a, a bad early game situation. Wow, we're gonna see everything here for Best. He knows that it's a macro game. Um, you'd be surprised if it was anything else, but. You do have to make sure, like you said, hedge your bets, get that extra cannon, cancel it if you find out that everything's normal here, and we'll get one overlord, but probably not much more as we will have Scourge popping out here momentarily. It might be able to get the second overlord over here, actually, and picking up the second overlord is a bit of a nuisance here for Soul Key. He doesn't yeah. have another one right now. He's actually going to get supply block, just barely no, not no, by this, no. but... Yeah. Just very really not. But it's annoying. Like, yeah. as a Zerg player, losing, like, even more than just one Overlord is really frustrating. If you don't have the Overlord already on the way and you, you avoid the supply block altogether, it's very frustrating. Like, having your drone production slow down even just a few seconds can really hiccup you because you're trying to squeeze out as many drones before you need to make units as possible. So even having that slow down just a tiny bit will either mean you've not got the units you need to defend because, you, you know, you're committing too much to the drones already, or you just, you know, you're not able to make the drones at all because you have to commit into the units as soon as the overalls are done. And look at this pressure here. There's no sunken online. There's only drones coming out. So we're going to get the first, uh, the other scenario I was talking about. And he's going to get a lot of drones here. And maybe even get the sunken uh, possibly as well. Yeah, this is a great play here by Best. He's going to get in, get a ton of damage. And I mean, the mutas are here now, but it's a little bit too late. Too many drones have already fallen and the lings are going to end up going down as well. I mean... Running out of here, this is fantastic for Best right now. He is in a great spot. Um, probably can run down these Zealots right now because they are um, very, very low on that HP, but he splits them up. This is great play. This is a fantastic uh, decision making here for Best. Just spreading out everywhere, making sure that he gets some of his Zealots home safe, even gets one last drone. Uh, at the end of that zealot's life and now an, uh, a dt on the map it's looking for some damage can he actually slip down in there to six o'clock we have like two sunken colonies that are not done yet and a dark archon here love to see it oh yeah he's gonna get a bunch of damage here this is these sunkens are not done there's the mutas coming back four kills so far can he get a fifth looks like there is a drone drill wow. and he manages to keep the rest of those drones alive but this is just a ton of damage right now he actually hit the drone drill underneath the overlord so the dt couldn't target the drone mm. so he manages to avoid losing five but still four is a pretty big hit when you've already taken that damage so i would say so far so good for best and he is showing why he's king kong like he can like just brute force his way into a bit of an advantage here even against really set up players it's kind of amazing to watch him play like he he hasn't always been the strongest PVZ of players, but in recent times, his PVZ, I would say, has improved dramatically. Yeah, really catching Soul Key off guard there. Managing to pick him off. Does he have the... Okay, Storm comes down. I don't think he has energy yet. No, no energy. No. 
Not enough energy on that just yet, but he doesn't reveal the Dark Arc on there. So we're still, you know, setting up for the surprise play with the Maelstrom to finish off all of those Mutas. Mutas are not going to make that much of a difference anymore. They've kind of done their job, which is pushing away the Zealots. Um, but you don't want to just suddenly lose all of them, and you'd really like to snipe some Templar here. So uh, this is going to be really big, tough for Soul Key if he manages to get that. Oh, he actually went for plus one. I'm really shocked that he went for plus one here. Um, not building a lot of Mutas, but he is going to come back into the main. There's the Dark Archon. Still hasn't revealed that yet. Best pushing forward here. Got to be really careful with that unit. You do not want to let Soul Key know about that until the last possible moment. He's coming out to take his third base. Soul Key here just falling all the way back across the map. This is... um gonna become a macro game i think we're gonna go late i think yeah here. i think so and he's only committed to six mutas so far as well so i don't think there's going to be a significant tempo swing if this was a different game where he committed to like say 10 or so mutas yeah. then i'd be a little bit more worried that we're going to see a big tempo swing in this game with the maelstrom but as it stands for this small mutant coming he's also doing economic damage and forcing storms with these mutas so they've already gotten the value they kind of need to get in this game they don't have to snipe templism to win the game per se so he's going to be churning out a lot of lurker hydra right now now to like kind of um, fortify these positions against this army of uh, so uh, of best so yeah i think the way everything's shaping up it looks like this is going to be a very solid macro game for both players so far this is the thing that really impresses me about soul key you saw all the damage that was done to him at this third base how many drones were killed and yeah. the forced lost mining time over there. And look at his supply right now. He's, I mean, he's caught up. It's crazy. It's absolutely insane. Great maelstrom there with a the storm. I mean, it could have been a little bit better, but he gets one lurker, picks that off. Um, he's going to deny that push over to that uh, position. He doesn't actually have uh, any observers here just yet. Um, so just denying that, stopping those lurkers from advancing here for a moment is going to be... Uh, very, very helpful for him. There's the first observer just popping out. Oh, no, the probe's getting stuck here. Very annoying. Looks like they are going to fix themselves. Wait, what are they doing? They went around the gateway a second time. That was weird. Yeah. They're going to head know. out now. <laughs> yeah, there's sometimes the gateway positioning can glitch out your probe transfer on certain maps if you build the gateways in certain locations. Can happen. Uh, one thing I would like to point out is that Sulky's playing really strong fundamental RTS. Like, he's pressuring while expanding. Like This is, like, pure fundamentals, and he's, he's executing it kind of flawlessly. Like, he had a small skirmish of units just pressuring up at the Mineral Oni, where Bess might be considering to expand to. Catching some more of these Corsairs with Scourge, Bess is now trying to make a big Gambit play, committing all his forces to this South Southern region, see if he can drive a wedge between the Zerg and, like, start to lay siege and take advantage of the fact that he can storm the units while well, they're kind of turtled up like this, but Soki can wrap around from the back and pincer this army if uh, Bess isn't careful here. Ooh, the storm! Ooh. So many Hydras getting whacked at the front. Bunch of Sunkins are about to finish up here, though. He will back away. That was a pretty decent trade here for Bess, and that's kind of what you want to do. That's just some good Protoss fundamentals. Protoss versus yeah. Zerg here just coming forward, taking a little trade with the Dragoons, drop a couple storms, back away. Uh, and just take the trade. I think those. this is some great moves from him. Can we actually hit the Maelstrom? Is it too far? I think he's just barely out of range here. And the Mutas are going to keep hitting that gateway. Super annoying here for best to deal with. There is a knock on morphing in. So if the, the, the Mutas try and run away, right as he, he could Maelstrom now, for example. I think he's going to. No, he doesn't have high ground vision. Damn. Uh. That's very annoying. <laughs> best not getting the value out of that Dark Archon that he wanted to. Um, but the Mutas are kind of out of the picture at this point anyway. Trying to push down here into the bottom left, but Solki is just so ready right now. He's got lurkers absolutely everywhere. The number is insane. But a drop going to come into the main base right now. Can he actually get some damage here? He's got one DT, I guess. Do we have a Templar in this as well uh, that he could potentially... No. All right. S Scourge just picking that off. Um, DT dropped here in the corner. I think that Solki is going to be onto that in a second. 
Yeah, I think Solky's on top of everything. All the I's have been dotted, all the T's have been crossed, and he's sitting pretty. He needs to be careful not to let Best just siege these positions and storm all the units while they're, like, bunched up too much. But there's three Sunkens down here with some Lurkers, so this should be relatively fortified enough, I think. I don't think that Best can break that. I think he can technically break that, but he'd lose so many units to do so, it wouldn't be worth it. Mm. So I, I, I don't think he's going to go for that play. And Solky's setting up a little bit of a counterattack uh, potential here, pressuring this uh, Mineral only that's going online right now and he's so deeply fortified in this bottom left pocket that i don't think best is gonna get anything done here either damn that's a lot of lurkers man i think you have to kill the eggs before you even attempt that yeah you do yeah, you can't is... go in there either way even with the eggs dead i don't think you should go into that no i think taking the fourth base here is the right decision maybe trying to expand up into the top left and that's why sulky is already up there checking that area he's making sure that he doesn't have that base yet and uh, if he's sending a probe up in that location he doesn't get it for free yeah we're gonna go to like triple evo production here hive online now to file a mound gonna be underway and so he's gonna see if he can get this top left pocket uh fortified a bit by building some lurkers up here and making it much harder for uh, best to start to establish some expansions in these top left corner right as he's starting to get mined out and look at this this pressure with the plus one weapons upgrade it's much easier for these the mutas to come in here and trade off these cannons like this and be really annoying for enforced loss mining time force out storms and without observers to spot the high ground they can kind of just chill up there for a little bit as well this is really frustrating for best to, to navigate because he's already kind of behind in the curve of the game and also having to lose a little bit of mining time here and there is going to affect him greatly oh what's going on with the drones down here six o'clock mining is kind of messed up right now i don't know if uh sulky uh, is going to notice that for some time he's actually dealing with a lot right now push up into the top left uh this is basically doing what it was supposed to do here for sulky which is just slow things down uh, from best just you know prevent him from uh, taking that base in the top left too easily and eventually i think we're going to see sulky make a move to actually uh, shut down the base going up over there at that corner uh, unless he wants to just move forward and take even more of the map i i doubt it though it's it's really a hard position if the protoss manages to take uh, that extra main base over in the top left. It's, it's not a game you want to play. Wow, so he's being so annoying and skirmishy with these muters to like cycle out killing these cannons and denying more mining time and forcing more and more storms. Just the attention splitting alone that Best has to do is frustrating. And yeah, the, the mining's really sub up towards 6 o'clock. There's actually not enough drones there on top of that. Maelstrom coming in to save some of these High Templars from being sniped. That High Templar was very close to going down there if that Maelstrom didn't go off. So he's going to be saving the Protoss Brevard in with those spells trying to get the maximum value out of the toolkit provided but still in a bit of a weird situation is best he's gonna try and split the map horizontally and stabilize get maxed out in a moment here but sulky already himself is maxed out and kind of able to explode out onto the map in a moment here with the defiler tech coming online to start chaining plagues and using dark swarms to fortify his uh, lurker movements yeah the zealots are gonna come out finish off these lings here sent to the top left there's something wrong with this these hatcheries down here at six o'clock i think he hasn't rallied these or you know he's misrallied them or something um the, the mining's messed up the rallies are messed up there's so many units down in that pocket i hope that silky figures that out one uh that out pretty soon he's here he's, he's trying to take this uh, position right here at the front and with the filers looks like he will be able to so adding on more bases he just gonna take half the map right now i find this type of situation to be very very difficult though as a zerg player uh, if you allow the protoss to take that top left and start to make reavers um there's not a lot of places you can you can try to take here i mean you can try to take center right you can try to take center left but the, those are very pushable very droppable uh, and stormable locations to to try and take so this is going to be rough if sulky wants to play this out late late game with half the map hey, one thing i'd like to point out is that like best isn't really mining the main and natural right now like he's kind of like pulled all the he's transferred all the the probes before being mined out so he's still got these like pockets of minerals to to go into if he needs to so he, he's done a kind of like a weird thing of like not actually fully mining out in his main and natural he's got a little bit of juice left in the tank there if he needs to access it has four speed shuttles just going to be diving into the main base as well poor man's recall in a pvz there are a few um overlords to spot this coming in
in, but nothing there to actually deal with it on the other end. So Sulky might take a lot of damage here while distracting at the front. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of DTs. Holy, four DTs, five, six DTs here in the main with a few Templar and an Archon. These DTs here trying to hold at the ramp. Some uh, Storm's going to be thrown out right now. The DT's going to handle a lot of these links. The Archon going to come to help out here, dealing a lot of damage right now while he was skirmishing over on the left-hand side. Another great storm going down. Some art or some uh, lurkers finally going to come up, and they get wow. absolutely minced right there. Excellent jump. Wow, these DTs still alive. This is insane. Dude, these DTs are doing so much damage right now. It is craziness. And Sulky finally going to maneuver a bunch more army down here to actually stop this from continuing, but he's lost his Defiler's Mound. He's not going to be able to make any more of those units for now. I might have denied an upgrade on that as well. I'm not sure if he has the, the energy upgrade on that yet, but this is this is a lot of damage from Bess. This is really slowed down Sulky and splitting the map in half. Plague. He, it's possible he has to cancel Plague. Like Maybe. Plague might have just been ready to finish. He might only have Dark Swarm right now. Dark Swarm and Consume available right now. It's very possible that he killed that just before Plague came online. I'm not yet sure. We'll see if that Plague starts to, to come out here. He's actually running forward. He does get the Plague. So okay. he has that upgrade done at least. But another drop going to come around this left-hand side. So he's in position to deal with that. Let's see if he just shuts it down. He does. He shuts it down immediately. He's going to be able to target down that Templar. And those Zealots will be taken care of. Very nicely done here. At least stopping this next drop. Because he really missed out on that first one. You're doing a great job of sniping some of these units as well with small pockets of hydras at the front. Like, really impressed with his ability to control. He just took so much damage into his main that was maybe a little bit unnecessary, unfortunately. And now going to be laying siege to this Mirani trying to go up with these Reavers. It's tough to attack into these small pockets of Protoss units when they have got Storm and Reaver support. But going to be trying to get in there on top of this shuttle to see if they can shut down uh, the Reavers being able to be mobile, but not able to do so. Good micro from Best there saving that and going to be able to just get away with his army and like you know reinforce it with more and more supply he's constantly remaxing out and strengthening his death ball here maybe he can like slowly uh, mount a, a, a winning position here against Solki. it is really tough to fight late game zvp like this very difficult to control so many zerg units yeah uh, did you see best there pick up his reavers as he was dodging away from the scourge that was wild um, yeah. yeah that was that was some scary stuff now just pushing in here sulky not paying attention i think he just threw down one uh big plague on a bunch of these reavers yeah. which i mean that did so much damage maybe he can snipe the reavers however uh if he doesn't snipe the reavers they will push through all of these lurkers on the defense he does kill two of the reavers and he pushes everything else back Zealots are going to run right up on top of this and get absolutely wrecked. So I think that this is going to be a successful defense here for Solki, but almost a breakthrough right now from Bess. He's really throwing everything at the wall and just seeing if he can make something stick. Yeah, I mean, so it, it looks pretty promising initially. It looks like Sulky's just got too much of a critical mass here to overcome. So he's going to be getting quite a few of these units on the exit as well. But Best does have quite a few bases online right now. There's going to be a big dropship gambit play into the main base of Best by the looks of it. If he can't get enough units over there to defend, this could do a lot of damage. As long as he's got some high templars there. He's got the amulet upgrade as well. These high templars that just popped out will be at a storm within 10 seconds because amulet upgrade does give you 62 starting energy instead of 50. So much closer to that first storm as the Templars pop out of the gateways at this stage of the game. So Sulky going to be wisely just uh, pulling back from that opportunity and not going to even going for it. It's possible those overlords were even empty as well and he's just trying to like, you know, force back the army positioning of Best a little bit and kind of like, you know, disguising his next play. He does want to still throw out as many of these plagues as possible. Getting some plague connections here, but honestly not the best connections anymore. Best doing actually a, a much uh, better job of splitting up his army against the plagues as the previous pros players have been doing. Yeah, this, she's doing a great job of dodging here, and Solki honestly not reacting quickly enough in some of these engagements, right? Like a, several times that we've seen, um, the Protoss is like on top of the army before he starts to throw down plagues or even burrow his lurkers, and uh, Bess is just doing a good job of making multiple threats on the map, of creating problems for Solki, and then taking advantage of his lack of attention on the main army or on his defilers to try and quickly pick them off this is going to be a great plague though 
very very big play on these reavers so important that you get that down as soon as possible so that you can get the snipe a little bit later with the hydras and here it goes he will get that snipe he picks off the reaver one more here at the back if he gets that reaver it's not going to be possible to push through this position anymore yeah he's really reliant on these siege units to break through this critical mass of zerg and with the, the lurker minefield you need so many storms to chew through that he's got a few extra storms in the bank but he needs to kind of run away right now because he's going to get his army swallowed up if he's not careful yeah this is this is rough too he drops off two or three dts into the bottom left but Sulky's learned his lesson. He built two sunken colonies down there. Um, I think he actually built those initially when he was holding off that attack. Oh my god, that plague is insane. That's so yeah. much damage. And these zealots finally getting doused here. It's not going to be easy to take a fight with those zealots anymore. They're going to get just absolutely shredded by everything. The lurkers, the lings. They cannot fight really efficiently anymore, and we have a very low Archon count. You remember Bisu had such a huge Archon count? This man has almost nothing in terms of those yeah. Archons. 25 kills on this Archon, though. That's a hero Archon right there. Even though he's one in the army, definitely a hero. Yeah, he's got 3-3 three, three upgrade, three, three, three upgrades, so 3 shields as well on these wow. units. So Archons are a lot more valuable than they would usually be. So yeah, it would be great if he did have a, a field of Archons to help fight against this right now. But still just relying purely on Zelot Goon, Templar, Reva. And I can't fault him for it entirely. Like, it is possible to break through and work here. It's just so difficult to do against someone of Sulky's caliber. I think most other Zergs would just fall flat against this kind of assault. But someone of, like, Sulky's ilk is just not going to be like shut down that easily and look at his beautiful plague just over and over again like he's really like done a good job of establishing these franchises of like foster care kebab houses and the, the chili sauce is just on tap here tonight saying yeah he's always got a defiler in the background he's consuming a bunch of lings getting into uh, a good position ready is the moment that these reavers get dropped the plagues are coming down and He's just diving in with small amounts of units to clear out the injured reavers, and it's exactly the way you want to do it. You don't want to unburrow all your lurkers and try to run in here against this many reavers. It would be a disaster. So he's instead just getting the plagues down and then coming forward with the small groups of hydras. This is a big attack, though. Diving on top of everything. Gets the two reavers, and that's it. That's all he has to do. He doesn't have to do anything more. He can just let this army fall back and wait for the next attempt here from best get more defilers out here get some more energy built up uh, consume some more lings and uh, he'll be ready for that next attack yeah so he finally got that energy upgrade on his defilers it was a long time coming after getting his uh defiler mount sniped that i think he um remembered to make that upgrade when he remade it so he just now got that energy upgrade but could be helping out here a little bit more with the energy management on those defilers needs to make sure he can uh, secure three o'clock and nine o'clock away from best that's like the two comeback potentials here from best if he can shut out for sulky from taking these three o'clock and nine o'clock positions and eventually take one or one or two of them himself he can still come back into this game eventually so sulky's um, aim at the game is going to be taking a bit more map presence away from best securing this three o'clock and nine o'clock location and then we're going to see a big checkmate move from him eventually but for the time being there's going to be a bit of a, a skirmish and a tug of war for these positions on the map because best can still win this game eventually i tell you what even with the base in the center right and the center left here for soul key it's still tough it's not easy to break through uh the the barrier of cost efficiency from the protoss in the late game they can just take such good trades over and over and over again you have to get the plagues down you have to dodge the storms properly you have to pick off the reavers whenever you can looks like these reavers are gonna end up going down he actually picks up and runs away with that last reaver but he thought he could uh, land on high ground there and just take some pot shots not the case sulky all over that and now best i mean i don't think he can stop this base all right he's gonna bring more reavers down here and now maybe he can take this down did he okay targeted an egg there that was interesting got some pretty good splash off of it now moving around here this left hand side can he actually break through i highly doubt it no reavers in this army but some great storm some great trading oh the plague though just completely turns the trade in sulky's favor here 
It was looking to be pretty decent, but as soon as that goes down, um, the, the, the cost efficiency just completely switches sides here. Yeah, the Storm is the only thing that makes early and mid game PVZ um, balanced, and Plague is the only thing that makes late game PVZ balanced again. So without these critical spells, it's very hard for both respective players. They're very reliant on them, and uh, as the Protoss player, you're much more reliant on Reavers at this stage of the game than you are Storm. Storm is like, you know, kind of like your insurance policy on not just melting to his army but you need some additional units like archons or um, reavers to really do the crazy cost efficiency damage in this late game phase and gonna be trying to get the snipe on this hatchery in the three o'clock but not gonna be able to do so so he's on top of everything tonight it's kind of insane like even the ability to like pick off individual high templars with lings while also doing everything out on the map earlier on like everything he's done has been really stellar tonight and really showing his uh, caliber well, things are starting to get a little bit simpler here in this game, right? We've run out of money here for best over at the mineral only. He's got this one mineral only that he's trying to take right now. And Sulky's got a maxed out army. So he's going to try and deny that. While best is going to try and maybe do some harassment over here at the center, right? And just defend that mineral only. And this is going to be a pretty straightforward finisher. I think for Solki, as long as he shuts this down and uh, successfully attacks into that mineral only, he should be able to take this game. But Bess is going to loop around while dropping these Reavers. He did quite a bit of damage over there. He didn't get a whole lot of kills on those drones. Great Storms, though. Great Storms killing a lot of drones. I don't think it's going to matter that much right here. The amount of drones that Solki has at all of these different bases is going to keep him in the money here for quite some time. Great Storms actually dealing with a lot of these links, which were bunched up, not able to attack there because the Templar were in the front, um, not automatically attacking anyway. Now pushing forward here, just waves and waves and waves of links. Finally, we do have a few Archons here to actually battle them, but it looks like Best not that interested in taking a big fight. He just wants to trade and back away, but Sulky's not happy with that. He's going to loop around, hit this top left and corner base, and he's going to chase down the Protoss here. Um, he's going to completely surround that while taking down the Nexus. Wow, really beautiful play here from Soki, understanding the current positionings of both armies and how best to exploit that. Could have gone for a wraparound play to try and clear up the army, but instead went for the counterattack on the mineral landings. He knew he had enough time to snipe that while the army was distracted on that western front. So, so far, great understanding of the game by Soki. And to be honest, though, like, Best has like really like done a good job of showing like ways of like shoving that square through the circle hole and like showing why he's good at doing that kind of thing. It's just someone of Sulky's caliber is not going to fall for it. Like, look at this stellar macro economics powerhouse of a Zerg we see here. Like, it's just so many uh, additional units that he even needs at any junction of the game. Like, he's got all the tools that he needs and more. Yeah, he's just always maxed out at this point. He's got so much money and so much larva. The moment that he's losing something, he's immediately rebuilding it. Um, the macro engine is just insane at this point. He's even taken center left. He doesn't have a lot over here at center right, but he's got some units uh, just at the edge of vision right here that are going to be coming in uh, the moment this attack starts here. Uh, Scourge are going to end up picking off one observer, not able to get the Scourge connections on the a uh, shuttle like he would want and the reavers are going to take some de some some good pot shots here but they do eat that big plague and i don't think the best can actually crack through here he's kind of stuck he's kind of stalled out right now and just a small group of high just running forward yeah. sniping down the reavers this is perfect play from soul kishin absolute textbook pv or zvp here yeah, this is a great, great series to learn from watching this guy play. Like, he's showing, like, absolute 101 Zerg late game play and how to navigate the early game shenanigans that you, you need to even get here to begin with. And it's really beautiful. Like, this is the best case scenario for best in these tight corridors with, like, stacked Reaver, Archon, Storm, and, like, like just getting loads of splash while you lay siege to the expansion. But Sulky's, like, like doing, like, a little reverse Uno card on him and using this tight corridor against him by just throwing out a Dark Swarm here and there, keeping the corridor under control with some lurkers, and then just, like, dousing the units in Plague over and over again and preventing these units from getting... Look at this. Just a constant Plagues non-stop on these units, making sure they don't ever get 
the cost efficiency that's required to come back in this game. We're also taking both of these gas expansions away from Best, getting a huge gas advantage, and then eventually Best will dry up. Yeah, he's doing a fantastic job here, just trading over and over again. But it's hard to trade against this many Reavers. It's not really possible with Pira Ling. And that's going to hold on there. He keeps that base alive. It's very important that he keeps that up for now. Um, circling around towards the center left. This is the one base that hasn't really been mined much. And if he was able to take this away from Solki, maybe we could see a mine out situation in this game. But Solki not going to give this up without a fight. Pushing forward here with pure Archon and some Reavers mixed in as well. Can he actually break this? It feels like Solki's just going to react in time. He's going to bring his entire army over here and block this from happening. Oh, some beautiful storms to counteract this wraparound at least so gonna be able to keep the golden bridge of retreat open to him if he so needs but this is just brutal for best like he really needs to crack this position open he's kind of done a good job of trading here this isn't the, the worst case scenario at all like he's done a pretty good job of being fairly cost efficient with these units it's just there's so many units in reserve for sulky i don't know how best is going to overcome these odds but so far he's done a, a pretty good job of breaking through here like but he just keeps losing the templars and reavers over and over again that he's never having the critical mass of death ball that he needs to just smash through yeah, Sulky showing exactly how it's done. Small groups of units running in and sniping the important Protoss army. Throwing down plagues whenever possible and then getting prepared slowly but surely for a huge wraparound to completely surround and destroy the Protoss force. He's going to go ahead and dive here onto the Nexus. Of course, that's not going to end up working, but he gets a great plague regardless. So it's still absolutely worth more Templar, yeah. more Archons coming up here. And another small group of Lings just about crack, breaking those uh, Reavers here. That's so many sunk in. Oh my god, and Best just lost his Observer, so he can't see over that wall. Yeah, the, the ridge line actually makes it much more difficult to attack into here, because without any kind of, like, without committing into it of your ground forces or having an Observer to spot, it's actually really difficult to attack into that pocket. And uh, we're, we're going to see just why Sulky's so good in these late-game situations, because he knows that as long as he trades with, like, a 35 40 percent efficiency rating he's going to still come out ahead so he's just going to keep forcing these interactions over and over again and using the plague to like reset the balance of power so even if he is trading a little bit inefficient the plagues are going to more than make up for that in the coming phases look at how many defilers he has here man i hardly ever see this number of defilers but he's really identified like the only thing that can go wrong here is if i lose all my defilers um and so he just yeah. he just has endless numbers of them he's got so many trying to break in here now but this is just a ton of sunken call and he's gonna completely deny this nothing but sunkins here kind of hilarious to see a defense like this but it's working brilliantly well, against the mass arc no you right? can't you can't storm sunkins yeah so i mean this is the problem for best like he the only thing he could have hoped for is like there being pure units there and you can like storm all in a clump and the reavers get some good scarab connections you can't really get that with sunkins and when the sunkins are this spread out as well it takes a long time for the reavers to shell them down so yeah that gives um sulky the time that he needs to like you know position a pincer attack as soon as best tries to commit into that base on the nine so really like caught between a rock and a hard place is best Best is running out of fuel here. He doesn't have much left. He's mined out his natural, he's mined out his main. Third, his fourth are just about gone here. I mean, the, the mineral only is probably going to get low pretty soon as well. This is not a very high mineral base, not a lot of patches here. Great plagues once again. He's going to try and break through, but there's lurkers here now. And the lurkers are going to do fantastically here against this mostly zealot army that's been plagued. The Defilers, I mean, they're going to get the greatest plagues here on a lot of these units. Oh, the Templar here just getting wiped yeah. out as well. And the Sunkins are MVP right now, picking off so many units on the retreat. Best falling back once again. And the army of Solki is legion right now crazy i'm absolutely blown away by just how like well calculated sulky's been playing i'm really impressed across the board like all the small skirmishing of like using a minimal amount of units to snipe critical units like high templars and reavers and this ability to navigate to a late game position where it's like 
forcing Best into a checkmate scenario almost no matter what he does. Like, this is kind of crazy that he's had this much control and composure throughout the entire um, phase. Every single phase of the game has just been really well navigated by Sulky in, in all of these games. And even in some games, he was seriously far behind and still managed to navigate to these similar positions. And this is what he does best. And he's able to force himself into these positions no matter what you do to him. Which is kind of crazy to think about. The embodiment of Sauron, Zerg here. Solki pooling together more and more and more forces here. Building an army worthy of Mordor. Look at that! Just rally point here from every area of the map. All of the hatcheries are rallied to that one spot. Protected by lurkers, covered by overlords, defended by defilers and lings and lurkers. Everything made to destroy the army that Bess has put together. And he's going to put on one more counterattack over here to the top left. Before moving to defend, I think, the center right, he's actually sending a lot of units over there. And Best realizing that this is what Solki's decided to do. He's going to maneuver quickly here to try and reinforce this position, but I think it's already too late. He's not going to be able to save the Reavers. The shuttles can't make their way over there. The Nexus is going to go down. The army moving through the middle of the map looks like it's about to get caught here as well. Lots of lings, lots of lurkers. There's a plague. He actually plagues his own lurker there. But it's not going to matter. Yeah, I don't think Sol it matters at this yeah. point. Sam. This is crazy gameplay from Solki. Like, and he's got a lot of sunkens at 3 o'clock as well. So he was like, okay, well, if you want to trade your army into my buildings, go right ahead. I'm just going to kill your base no matter what happens, even if you do somehow break that. And even if he did break that 3 o'clock, he would have traded a lot of his army for it against the sunken and lurker set up there as well. So nothing best can do is the right answer, which is so great to see from Solki that he's able to put best in this position where nothing he's doing is correct and that's 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 crazy to think about because it's very difficult to have this level of control even if you are far ahead in starcraft very it's very easy to throw your leads in starcraft so the fact that he's had this amount of composure and control over every single phase of the game is seriously impressive yeah just getting so much value out of these units even though they're in small number it's the right way to trade with protoss is by sniping these very important units with just small groups and then gearing up for that big surround play he's done it over and over and over again but i think we're reaching the twilight of this game now yeah. as sulky positions himself for one last big surround here on the rebuilt base here he loses the shuttle the shuttle goes down with reavers yeah. inside and i mean there's just no reavers left it's time to bring the lurkers up so, I mean, Sulky can just assault this position full on head on without that additional splash damage. Well, there's a lot of storm in here. He's got to be careful not to take too bad of trades, but I, I don't know if there's any trade uh, imaginable that could this is looking throw like, yeah, the game for Sulky. This, this is looking like the defense of Aya. Like, Protoss is trying desperately to hang on to their home world, and they're just not able to do it. The hive mind is just far too strong, descending upon them from all angles of the map. Very Sauron Zerg esque. And this is what Sulky does best. And he's going to be dismantling best here, killing the final few threads of units that are hanging on. And it doesn't look like there's any hope left for best now. 70 supply to 160. GG finally going to be called. And now the Protoss dugout have a difficult decision. Who do we revive? No one's really performed as expected here who are they going to bring out soon well there's your answer shun it's going to be best brought out once again he's going to get the revive here and a second chance to redeem himself i feel like the protoss were just kind of scratching their heads though after that last game like who do we want to send out who wants yeah. to go out against this monster <laughs> yeah i think you might be right about that and maybe maybe best was the only one with like any kind of balls to be like yeah i got this guys i got this send me out let the great ape show you what it's all about and he never know i mean if this guy does somehow reverse sweep this whole lineup i'm gonna be i'm gonna be worshiping him he's gonna be the guy that i start to see in my psychedelic trips you know what i mean like i don't see the great toad anymore i see the great ape just giving me this like square through the circle whole wisdom all day long
Well, I, I don't know if you can really shove the square through the circle hole against this man. Wait a second. You maybe can. Maybe you can. One HP on this probe as well after that snipe. Beautifully executed from best, especially if you can get out with the uh, probe alive here. Really uh, annoying Sulky in the early game, getting into his wow. head right away. And that's going to be the kind of thing you need to do in this game. I mean, that's a, a massive advantage. Um, you don't often see that in a professional match. It's like more of a thing that happens when there's like a, a ladder game where you're 300 MMR above your opponent. Exactly, it's kind of insane to see, and it was so beautifully mapped out by Best, and Soki was confident because of how close the calculation was, that probe just barely didn't die, you know what I mean, like really well calculated from Best here, putting on his little uh, uh, Futurama hat here and showing that he's a thinking ape as well. <laughs> I mean, even if the probe died there, if the drone dies, it's still mega worth for Best, but... um. With the probe staying alive, this is just crazy, crazy, crazy value for him. And everything's going to be slowed down here for Soul Key by a large amount. And I, guys, we're not over uh, hyping this at all. That is, you know, what, what a ninth of his economy. And, uh, yeah. you know, a lost, a lost uh, larva that you're just never going to get back. Um, right. There's and the probe is still alive and scouting yeah. you. Yeah, and there, there's ways that you can kind of make it back, but as long as Bess is going to put on pressure here and be annoying, like it, it's not going to be easy to make up those those early losses. It's going to snowball further and further. Yeah, and he's going to cycle out the, the weakened probe for a fresh one so he can come back in here, and uh, the links aren't actually going to stop this from scouting. He's going to get inside the main base and confirm exactly what's what. Yeah, he actually did a mineral walk there from you know he he made sure that he had vision on the minerals in the main with yeah. the first probe and then just right click so i mean he he gets this no matter what and it's massive because best now he knows that there's a layer here he he 100 percent realizes that there's no way that uh, a hydra bus can come and without the element of surprise or the the kind of fog of war here for sulky being on his side mm -hmm. i mean what can he do here as sulky to try and bring things back well, this is the issue, right? Like, if you do get your tech scouted like this, it's very difficult to, to deal with the Protoss because the Protoss can be so much more adjusted to you. Like, the min-maxing that the Protoss can do relative to what they scout is insane. And if they don't scout you, they have to do a lot of hedging of their bets to make sure they don't just die. So if you don't look, each cannon they build is a whole gateway. Like it's so crazy. Like the tiny little mini games that happen with the scouting early game. Because if you do get scouted um, as Zerg, here, it's so frustrating because nothing you can really do can put a dent and in, uh, into the Protoss uh, infrastructure anymore. And they can um, min max and be as optimal against you uh, for their relative timings as much as possible. And that completely deflates you as a Zerg player. It's so important to deny scouting early game. This is horrible as well for Sulky. I mean, he checked the front. He saw no Zealot. But he didn't realize that this had been sent out on the map. And we're going to get a drone. Oh, my God. And drone goes down. But Ling speed is done here. It's going to dive on top of the cannon. The pro block is insane. The uh, cannon's going to get almost completely surrounded. All the links are going to get down immediately. And the cannon restarts here just within seconds. So... I don't think that Zolki is going to be able to break this here. He's got one Ling in the main for like, what, 10 Lings that he just lost? Yeah. How is he, how yeah, is that only, worth? That's not worth at all. The, the only compensation there was the fact that he's forcing two cannons now instead of one, and he's also uh, has a chance at coming in here again with these links. Oh, Best hasn't no. pulled the top Why load, didn't so... he pull the probes? Oh, the cannon's just now finishing up, and the links get a pretty good surround. They are going to be able to kill that cannon, but most of the links will go down. So have a little bit of a repeat scenario, but this time there's a lot more links coming in. Best is now surrounding the other cannon that's just now coming online. This surround's a lot more efficient, though. Going to be able to block out these links from doing too much but some probes are going down nonetheless so still getting some critical economic damage done to best with those zerglings but i would still say that's a pretty good hold from best all things considered whoa double hydralis den here in the main base i think we lost the corsair did the corsair go down i think we might have killed the corsair uh, 
um, during all so. that and chaos. Also, and he does have a full hatch Hydra timing here. Like, he's, he's put a big enough dent into Best that he can get a, a lot of Hydras out here prior to there being Storm online to deal with that. So, Best would have to make, like, five or six cannons to just not die to a critical amount of Hydras coming his way. There isn't the kind of saturation that um, Sulky wants, though. Like, he wants, like, nine, um, seven, six kind of drone saturation, and he's only got, like, one drone mining at his third base right now, so he's not going to have the same kind of potency in this timing that he would like to have, but relative to the amount of damage he's done to best economy, it might still be strong enough to still um, absolutely bowl him over, so we'll have to see. Yeah, he's going to try and hide the Hydras as long as possible, running around these Zealots. The Zealots are going to come in towards the third. Hydras are going to leave that third base around the top here to try and hide this for as much as he can. He's going to move through the bottom side, dealing with this with Pure Ling, if possible, and try to break the front uh, right now. He's got to go right now, though. Um, a little bit shocked that he sent the Hydras kind of back for a moment. He's not sending them forward here. Uh, the, the Zealots are going to start to deal some damage. And here comes the Hydras now, yeah. finally. There's no overload, though, here, critically. If there's a DT on the way, he's just going to die. There's only two cannons here. Can he actually make this work? Soul Key going for the bust here. Probes are going to be pulled to the front. Can best hold? This is a crazy attack right now. It's absolutely insane. He will be able to get one cannon for free, but Probe's buying a little bit of valuable time for the um, um, before the other additional units come in. So we'll have a few seconds of not dying here, but I don't think that's going to last very long. If he doesn't make a DT right away, he might just die straight up. Uh, he's desperately throwing down as many cannons as possible. Probe's here to buffer, but Sulky still bleeds through despite the beautiful wall from Best. So now all these cannons are going to be sniped before they can get online. And without any DTs here to squash this, I think he's just straight up dead here. Wow, what a gamble here from Solki. He knew the bad position he was in. He didn't have an option. No, there's no uh, even Templar archives yet. The, the Templar yeah, archives have Templar really archive. slowed down here. Wow. GG. Oh my god. What a series here from Solki. What a final game to end on, Shun. That was impressive. That was really impressive. I'm really happy he went for that kind of like double Hydra Dan Gambit there because, yeah, he, there was a critical window there. The storm would not be ready. I mean, you saw that he didn't even have a Templar archives. He was so at a deficit there. So it's a beautiful identification there from Sulky to go for a play like that. And he's a much more macro oriented player, but you don't want to play macro every single time. You want to sometimes throw in these kind of like wild card maneuvers, to keep your opponent guessing. And he was scouted early game. So kind of crazy that like he was fully scouted early on, but meant to do this kind of insane transition. We've seen him do that before in the ASL and other games like even though he's not the kind of player to go for like Hydra Bus like uh, quite typically like he does like to go for these sort of tempo swing plays where you think he's playing a standard three base Spire play and suddenly he throws down two dens and just like you know catches you off guard yeah that was so cool like right as uh, the the Corsair got pushed out of the main right he popped his first pair of Scourge and the Corsair had to go home and all that chaos was going on in the natural of best he just drops two uh, Hydralis Den's confident that he's not going to get scouted and goes for the bus. It just worked so perfectly. Best wasn't able to figure it out. If Best had, if Best had walked his Zealots to the to the natural there instead of the third, just I, I think he would have found that in time. Maybe he could have thrown down some more cannons, but he just had no, no. idea. He had no DT follow-up. Just a crazy final game to end on, guys. Unfortunately, we're not going to get to have um, you know that full series here with the rest of the Zerg players able to 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 come out and test their skills here it's just soul key putting everyone in his backpack and carrying them over the finish line yeah absolutely insane stellar performance here from our champion soul key opening up his own foster care and just like making sure these kids are well looked after you know like it's kind of shocking just how much of a one-sided show this was for Sulky. I mean, these aren't like the, these aren't like small Protoss players. You're, Mini and Bisu especially like are supposed to be specialists in this matchup, and he made it look easy. Even Snow is supposed to be performing way better. He was dismantled by Hero quite effectively early on as well. I'm sure Sulky was a little bit uh, salty that he didn't go out right away um, from game number one because he might have been able to take out all of the lineup here and did a nice little all-kill. Cool. Just to wrap up here, Sulky taking it home for the Zerg. What a fantastic last game here from these two players. Just 
just so much to learn, honestly, from this entire series as a Zerg. It's like there's just a, a wealth of knowledge here being granted to us here from Soul Key. And um, I mean, I think it's pretty clear now that the reason why Zerg wasn't doing too hot this season was probably because Soul Key was busy with ASL, right? Yeah, I mean, it does seem to be like that. I mean, he wasn't able to, you know, have an attendance in the earlier weeks. And now that ASL's all wrapped up, he's making a debut in the finals and just like cleaning up shop, it seems. And kind of like has the advantage of that recent victory, both in his own momentum and confidence and being able to play his absolute best and also having an air of intimidation factor against his opponents. They're going to be even more scared of Sulky than ever before after his recent showing in ASL. So even that might be factoring in a little bit in these games and giving a little bit of a psychological edge to him against some of these players that just seem a little bit shaky today to be fair like bisu and many just really not showing up as we expected them to and this series is going to add to that lore that mythos around soul key as we continue forward and seasons to come and asl seasons to come guys this is it we're wrapping up here for season two of 2024 but we'll be back for season three in just a week's time uh next week will be an off week and then after that We'll be starting up season three. So be sure to stay on the lookout for that. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel. Also hit the description, uh, check out Shun, his channel, and also uh, hit the, this, the, the link in the description for KCM's version of this video. Head over there, give him some comments, give him some love. Let him know that you appreciate uh, everything that he's doing for StarCraft and We'll see you guys in two weeks. Bye. Thanks, guys.